in reed com chapter three thousand nine hundred sixty one the nineteenth prince ju yifend within the primal chaos space long chen was studying star diagrams the dragon expert had said that due to his path deviating from the original nine star hegemon body art his current seven star battle armor was a far cry from the true seven star battle armor however long chen could still change the seven star battle armor adjusting its circulation path and arrangement into a stronger form but while saying it was easy actually doing it was a different matter right now the seven stars and the star diagram complemented each other thus moving a single star would cause the entire thing to change including the entire starry sea if he were to try using it in a bad form there would be a power backflow and he would simply instantly explode thus long chan was still in the theory phase with the help of the seven treasure colored glass tree long chen had come up with dozens of possibilities however he knew that this wasn't enough he had to keep going until he exhausted all possibilities then he would compare them using all these different possibilities to dredge out and corroborate the path that was truly his it was at this time that certain runes in the training room lit up to indicate that someone outside wished to see him originally long chan was planning on ignoring this person however the training room said that the person who wished to see him was yu yifeng the zhu surname was the surname of the vermilion bird empire's royalty thinking of this long chan was worried about the possibility that yu kingchuan had sent someone to him so he left the primal chaos space to check it out brother long do you still remember this junior brother that person smiled when he saw Long Chen come out. To his surprise, the person who came to find him was the youth who had shared a seat with him in front of the stage that day. His name was Xu Yifeng. So it's Brother Zhu. May I ask what you need from me? asked Long Chen, getting right to the point. Ah, I feel great reverence for Brother Long. That day, when you slapped Yunuch Wai, I almost cheered. That damn eunuch, you don't even know how hateful he is. My imperial father favors him, so he actually doesn't even care about a prince like myself. I've long since wanted to slap him, but never had a chance to. Of course, even if I had the chance, I wouldn't dare to do so. I wouldn't be able to beat him, chortled Zhu Yifen. Long Chen laughed. This Zhu Yifen was quite interesting. At least, he was much better than those icy princes and princesses that Long Chen had encountered before. I heard that you came here to propose to Princess King Shun. That's amazing. Yu Yifeng gave Long Chen a thumbs up. Princess King Shun is my imperial father's most cherished daughter. Don't think that he wouldn't be strict and cold toward us just because we are his children. If we make mistakes, we are always punished and even more heavily than others. Actually, I was originally the twentieth prince, but the nineteenth prince was killed by my imperial father, so I'm now the nineteenth. He killed your older brother. Why? Long Chen jumped in shock. How could someone kill their own son? My brother had some dealings with the Violet Thunderclap Empire. I'm not sure about the details but my imperial father was so furious that he directly cut off his head. No one was able to stop him. Ah, uh, don't tell anyone that I told you this. If my imperial father hears of it, even if he doesn't kill me, I'll definitely lose a layer of skin. Zhu Yifeng suddenly realized that he had exposed a major secret, a taboo subject in the royal family. Hence, he instantly turned pale and looked at Long Chen beggingly. Don't worry, I'm not a blabbermouth. Furthermore, your father is my future father-in-law. We're a family, so why would I harm you? Long Chen patted Zhu Yifeng's shoulder. This child spoke directly from the heart, so Long Chen's wariness toward him instantly dropped a great deal. Getting along with such people was much easier. 
Ju Yifeng sighed with relief after hearing Long Chen's guarantee. All of a sudden he excitedly asked, That's right, Brother Long, what were the results of your proposal? I only heard that you've started the trials. Are things progressing smoothly? His Majesty treats me decently. He agreed that it would be all right as long as I passed the trials. The two empresses are also nice and even wanted to give me a golden status plate at the time, but I refused. I, Long Chen, am a man who raises the heavens from the earth. How could I rely on other people's help for such a thing? Long Chen's face didn't even redden in the slightest as he spouted these lies. Back then, he and the emperor had come so close to exchanging curses right at each other's faces. But somehow, Long Chen managed to say that their relationship was decent. Wow, brother Long, you're amazing. No, big brother, my real brother. You're going to be my brother-in-law soon. In the future, make sure to look after me. Zhu Yifeng's nature was very simple. He believed whatever Long Chen said without the slightest suspicion. He was even grabbing Long Chen's hand like he had found his lucky star. Puff. Seeing Zhu Yifeng believe him to this extent, Long Chen actually felt a bit bad and hastily said, I'll, although becoming the imperial son-in-law is nothing difficult, I'll need to take it step by step. The goal is still a bit far. Just based on the fact that you dared to slap Eunuch Wai's head into that of a pig and still leave the palace safe and sound is enough to show me that Big Brother is definitely a major figure. Ah, uh, don't misunderstand, it's not that I'm trying to drag you to my side. I'm different from the other princes and princesses. I have no desire to fight for the position of emperor. Well, the main thing is that I simply have no chance. Thus, I just want some support. I don't care who becomes the next emperor. As long as they ignore me, it's fine. I just want to live a simple life, said Zhu Yifeng. If you don't even want to become the emperor, why would others make things hard on you? Why would you need a backer? asked Long Chen. Zhu Yifen had a crying expression as he said, Big brother, you don't understand. The imperial family doesn't care about family love. As an imperial disciple, you have to be outstanding. You have to be learned and powerful. Since it's only just us here, I'll tell you the truth. If my imperial father were to hear me say something so unambitious, he would definitely cast me into the fire prison. Let alone my imperial father, even my mother would give me a beating. The princes and princesses are all competing against each other, both openly and in secret. As for me, I'm dumber than them, and I can't beat them in martial power either. So, amongst my brothers and sisters, I only dare to fight with words, acting like I'm not afraid of them. In truth, I'm terrified inside, but I can't show it. Your talent is already so good, but you can't beat a single prince or princess. Long Chen I Ju Yifeng. Although he wasn't a double supreme, his flame energy was extremely pure. According to reason, he shouldn't be weak. I can't. I can't beat a single one. Chu Yifeng almost wept. He suddenly thought of why he had come here in the first place and said, Big brother, I came because I thought of something that can let you rise in martial artist rank very quickly. You won't need to waste so much time. I'll uh, let me hear it. During the next competition, I'll make an agreement with the arena. Once you win, you will be directly promoted to my training partner. After all, every prince and princess has the authority to pick a training partner from the martial stage once a year. I still haven't done so this year, and this can help you out a little bit. Hopefully, when you soar, you can look after me a bit. Long Chen directly agreed to such a good thing. This way, he could borrow Zhu Yifen's status and directly be promoted to higher level fights. Hearing this, Zhu Yifen was delighted and immediately said that he didn't want to delay Long Chen's cultivation. He then bid Long Chen farewell. Three days later, 
It was Long Chen's turn on the martial stage again, and Zhu Yifint was already waiting for him. After the advocate took out a document and gave it to Long Chen, Long Chen directly signed his name there. Just like before, as soon as Long Chen stepped onto the stage, the opponent directly cursed, admitted defeat, and left. Ha ha ha, big brother, now you're my trading partner. We're comrades now. Zhu Yifen danced in excitement in read, Come, you're getting happy too early. Just then, an icy voice rang out, and Princess Yu Kai Su appeared with a dozen bodyguards around her. When Long Chen saw her pleased smile, he instantly had a bad feeling. In read, com chapter 3962, selling oneself, what are you doing here? Zhu Yifim's expression instantly changed when he saw Yu Kaiang Su. Long Chen is not your training partner. He is mine, said Yu Kaiang Su coldly. You want to fight over my big brother? HMPH, it's useless. I've already signed the contract. You're too late, snorted Zhu Yifin. He then waved the document in front of her face. Why don't you look at that document again? Whose name is on there? Asked Yu Kaiang Su. Zhu Yifin was startled and hastily looked down at the contract. Long Chen did the same. Shockingly, it was Yu Kaiang Su's name there, not Zhu Yifin's. What did you do? Long Chen was dumbfounded as he looked at Zhu Yifin. How could he possibly make a mistake? Eh? Zhu Yifin was too shocked to answer. He refused to believe that this was the document, but Yu Kaiang Su's name was clearly stated there. Long Chen, you are now my training partner. I'll probably accompany you. Yu Kaiang Su walked over to Long Chen and looked into his eyes profoundly. Long Chen then looked at the advocate. The moment he did, the advocate turned his face away. That one movement caused Long Chen to instantly understand. It was highly likely that this advocate had been bribed by Yu Kaiang Su to replace Zhu Yifeng's original document. Moreover, since Zhu Yifeng was present during that time, Long Chen had assumed that everything was already taken care of, leading him to sign the document without bothering to read it. Long Chen was speechless. He hadn't expected that after being smart for a lifetime, he would end up selling himself in a moment of carelessness. Furthermore, each contract lasted three years. Long Chen then grabbed the document and looked at it more closely. It was a very clear contract between two people. Yu Kaiang Su's name was written right where it should be, and she hadn't hidden her name at all. Thus, Long Chen could only blame himself for not paying attention. Of course, you can tear up the contract, but that would mean that your word isn't worth anything. I trust that you won't do something like that, am I right? Yu Kaiang Su smiled at Long Chen. Long Chen looked back at her and also smiled. I, Long Chen, naturally disdain doing such a thing. Don't worry. After saying that, Long Chen handed the document to Yu Kaiang Su. Yu Kaiang Su then received it and put it away. She looked at Long Chen without saying anything. Big brother, I'm sorry. Zhu Yifen had been schemed against and he was ashamed. He had the urge to slap himself. It's all right. It was my fault as well. Since that's the case, there's no need to grumble, said Long Chen indifferently. He truly couldn't blame Zhu Yifen for this. Out of nowhere, a streak of light shot toward Long Chen. Reacting swiftly, Long Chen extended his hand and managed to catch it mid-air. To his surprise, it turned out to be a status plate. Starting today, you are one of my people, so my princess mansion is your home. Come report to me within three days. After saying that, Yu Kaiang Su left with her bodyguards. She acted cleanly and efficiently, striking like lightning and moving like the wind. Long Chen knew that Yu Kaiang Su did not actually want him as a training partner. What she wanted was to gradually draw him under her command. This woman knew that Long Chen had come for King Xuan. 
So, for her to dare to do such a thing, Long Chen didn't know what she was thinking. Was she trying to humiliate Yu Qingxuan? Vade brother. Zhu Yifen looked at Long Chen with a clear shame on his face. Long Chen patted his shoulder comfortingly. It's a minor matter. Even with this contract, it doesn't mean that I've sold my body to her. She's nothing to be afraid of. Long Chen. Suddenly, a friendly shout rang out. Long Chen then saw Yu Qingxuan walking over with a sweet smile. Qingxuan, you've also come. Long Chen was delighted to see her. Yifen greets big sister Qingxuan. Zhu Yifen hastily bowed to her. Yifen, why are you here? Yu Qingxuan was surprised to see him. Ah, it's a long story. I'll take my leave first. Zhu Yifen was at least not that dense, so he found an excuse to leave the two of them alone. Qingxuan, how are you here? And you're alone. Long Chen was exceptionally happy that she had come without those dislikable eunuchs. He he, the palace has many rules and I have many lessons. But I also have some free time. Today I can do whatever I want to do, said Yu Qingxuan with a smile. She was as happy as a child at this moment. Ah, good. This is the Vermilion Bird City. Imperial Princess, show me the local culture of the Vermilion Bird Empire. Yes, I know the most famous restaurants in the empire and the best views. Yu Qingxuan laughed and pulled Long Chen over to a transportation formation. Yu Qingxuan was now dressed like a regular commoner without the ornaments to show off her status. That meant that she would no longer have any imperial privilege, and that the imperial rules would not bind her. She then acted as a tour guide, introducing Long Chen to the culture inside the city. There were ancient cultural relics and all kinds of delicacies to enjoy. It went without saying that the Vermilion Bird Empire did possess an ancient history. Here, there were many places with historical stories and special origins. Long Chen was sighing endlessly over all of it. Long Chen, you're a good hacker, right? I want to buy a hairpin. Can you help me get one? When they passed by an ornament store, Yu Qingxuan stealthily pointed at the small hairpin collection inside. Long Chen knew that Yu Qingxuan wasn't worried about money. Even if the store demanded an outrageous price, she could still buy it. She simply felt that it would be fun to see Long Chen bargain for stuff, just like when they were in the Violet Flame Heaven capital. Boss, how much for one of these hair ornaments? Asked Long Chen directly. Wow, young master's vision is amazing. This is my priceless treasure, all right, all right. Why don't you just tell me your price? I see that you're a good man. Are you buying it for your wife? I won't play any games with you then. I'll offer it to you at the lowest price, three thousand, not one copper less, said the shopkeeper solemnly. Eighty. What? Are you joking? That is impossible. The old man's expression grew a bit unsightly. Long Chen didn't reply. He simply grabbed Yu Qingxuan's hand and walked away. The shopkeeper hastily cried out, Fine, fine, count it as me being afraid of you. Take it. Yu Qingxuan almost laughed. This haggling technique was truly shocking, but the shopkeeper actually accepted this price. Here, give me my change. Yu Qingxuan picked out one of the hairpins from the selection, and Long Chen tossed out a single hundred silver coin. The shopkeeper took it and suddenly said, this is too much money. I don't have enough change for you. Young man, why don't you take another hairpin before going? PFFT. Long Chen almost coughed up blood. In read, Com Chapter 3963, Losing Money, Winning a Beauty's Laughter After Spending a Lifetime Haggling, he had finally miscalculated. Just what was going on today? Was his horoscope bad for today? Not only did he sell himself to someone else, but his haggling skill had also regressed. All right, shopkeeper, count yourself vicious. Long Chen directly admitted defeat. 
having managed to haggle three thousand down to eighty he had thought that this was the limit and anything further would cause the shopkeeper to turn hostile unexpectedly he had severely underestimated this fellow two hairpins for one hundred silver most likely the shopkeeper still made a large profit probably over seventy silver from this transaction he did that on purpose definitely on purpose long chen walked out of the shop with his teeth clenched furiously meanwhile yu king shuen was holding his arm laughing most likely it was long chen's pleased expression after haggling that made the shopkeeper irritated so he gave long chen a little lesson letting him take another hairpin to tell him that he was still too young however seeing yu king shuen laughing delightedly long chen felt that this loss was worth it if the hair ornaments made her smile then this money was well spent junior brother i see that you are blessed with fortune and vision why don't you come and take a look at my humble shop these are historical objects from the ancient era why not gain some experience here an elder warmly called out to them from an antique shop long chen took a look inside and then turned to the elder irritably the oldest thing in this shop is you hearing this answer yu king shuen burst into laughter she could also tell that the antiques here were mostly fakes but long chen's phrasing was too funny she always felt particularly happy with long chen there are people on scholar road looking for a husband let's go take a look suddenly they heard an exclamation on the street and countless people were running in one direction let's go take a look too yu king chuen started running while dragging long chen along you foolish girl what are we looking for are you trying to get a wife for me long chen bitterly smiled we're just taking a look it's not that important yu king chuen didn't get angry and just giggled as she dragged him along they quickly joined a large crowd around a stage. Standing prominently on the stage were two exquisite-looking maidens in their early twenties. He he, this is a groom search, but it's also a scholar competition. It's like a martial arts competition to look for a wife. Look, their origins shouldn't be ordinary. Do you see that couplet in their hands? Yu King Shuen pointed only then did long chen notice the couplet held between their hands there was a banner saying one da jayo two zayo jayo three golden lotus feet four inch waist five six seven makeups eight nine dresses ten out of ten looks these two were sisters one named da jayo and the other named zayo jayo they were appraising the crowd and when they saw a few hanlin scholars in the crowd their eyes immediately lit up this couplet was written by our father and the two of us are willing to serve any nobleman who can come up with a matching couplet said one of them it was undeniable that both of them possessed not only breathtaking beauty but also voices that resonated like enchanting melodies the hanlin scholars were interested and walked over to the stage they then examined the couplet trying to think of a matching verse difficult very difficult for the first half to count up one two three four five six seven eight nine ten the lower half must be the opposite that just makes it even more difficult said one hanlin scholar sighing in truth it wasn't impossible to match the couplet but a good verse required delicate work it needed to rhyme as well as to match the syllables and timing as hanlin scholars they refused to simply give a second-rate answer if anyone were to pick out their flaws that would cause them to lose face hence it would be better to simply say that they could not come up with anything that could match it is this hard all these people can't do it long chen couldn't help looking at yu king shuen in surprise these words were only for yu king shuen but before she could answer someone around them sneered big words not even great hanlin scholars can come up with anything so how could it not be difficult if it's not difficult why don't you try it this person was also a scholar 
and seeing Long Chen carrying a giant saber on his back, he knew that Long Chen was a martial cultivator. After hearing Long Chen question their ability so arrogantly, this person naturally retorted. He intentionally spoke loudly so that the surrounding people heard. As a result, everyone in the surroundings looked at Long Chen. The reason their gazes were focused on Long Chen was because Yu Qingxuan had used a magical art so that only Long Chen could see her face clearly. Others would only see an ordinary woman when they looked at her. It's you. You were the one who was rude to the philosopher and then argued on the zither fairy stage. Someone quickly recognized him. As a large number of the people here were scholars, they all glared at him hostilely. He he, Long Chen, give a matching verse for this couplet. Put them in their place, said Yu Qingxuan. With her saying this, Long Chen looked at the surroundings. There were seven Hanlin scholars around them, six glaring at him and one pondering, seemingly still wondering about how to match this couplet. This was a main street. As it was nighttime, the lanterns on the street had been lit, and the moon was hanging in the sky. Somehow, Long Chen and Yu Qingxuan had been out for a long time, not realizing that the day was coming soon. Eyeing his surroundings, Long Chen indifferently said, The tenth day of the ninth month, eight tenths of the full moon shine. Seven Hanlin scholars, six arrogant. Fifth hour, fourth strike, third light. Two Jios follow one person away. Hearing this, the people in the crowd stood there like wooden chickens. This complete couplet was put together perfectly, and there were almost no flaws. By the time they reacted, Long Chen had already left with Yu Qingxuan, leaving behind the dumbstruck crowd. He, if you were to give up martial cultivation and focus on literature, in ten years, no, seven years, you will be comparable to a philosopher, said Yu Qingxuan proudly. That's right, Qingxuan, what exactly is this philosopher rank? asked Long Chen. Ah, the philosopher is a rank for the highest level of learning in the Vermilion Bird Empire. We only have three. Two of them stay in the Philosopher Institute and rarely come out, and only Philosopher Sun likes to go around. He teaches and accepts disciples, even holding classes for us in the palace. To tell the truth, I'm not very fond of him. He's rather decrepit. But in theory, his position is equivalent to that of the emperor, so we still have to greet him as disciples when we see him. Yu Qingxuan was rather sullen. For someone as kind as Yu Qingxuan to give such an evaluation of someone, it was clear that this philosopher was no good. What philosopher? To dare make my Qingxuan feel aggrieved, just wait until I beat him up, raged Long Chen. Yu Qingxuan once more laughed, but in a bit. The sun began to rise. Having no choice but to return to the palace, Yu Qingxuan then bid farewell reluctantly. As the sound of her laughter faded away, Long Chen felt a sense of loneliness well up within him. This is no good. I have to proceed faster. Long Chen went to Yu Qingxu's mansion. At the gate, he revealed his status plate, and the guard immediately let him in. After passing two gates, Long Chen arrived in a spacious courtyard, but he frowned. There was an expert with a spear blocking his way. He was a red-haired man with astonishing blood kai. When they saw each other, he pointed his spear at Long Chen and disdainfully said, How could seeing the princess be so simple? I'll give you two choices. Beat me and I'll let you through, or you can crawl between my pads. I feel like there's a third choice. I'll walk over your corpse. Long Chen's killing intent was instantly triggered by this man's arrogant conduct. Bookmark this website in readcom to update the latest novels. Chapter 3964 An Ant Calling Itself an Elephant Walk Over My Corpse. Ah, oh, that's the funniest joke I've ever heard. You really think that you can do that? The red haired man laughed his voice full of disdain. 
You don't even have a supreme aura, so what could you possibly do? HMPH, I'll see if you have the ability to receive the princess's favor. Some people are so foolish because they don't know just how much power they have. How can an ant appraise the power of a dragon? Should a greenhouse flower that hasn't even set foot on a true battlefield be so arrogant? If you were just arrogant, then I wouldn't care. But why must you try to humiliate me? You have no respect in your heart. Is it because I've been too nice lately? Remember my words. It is better to bully arrogant people than to offend nice people, because once nice people are angered, they won't even give you a chance to kneel and beg for mercy, said Long Chen. Long Chen had slaughtered too many life forms in the three thousand worlds, so he knew that his dark energy was starting to get riled up again. It was growing even faster than he had expected. As this dark energy severely affected his emotions, he wanted to retain his rationality and calm at all times, not letting that tyrannical Kai affect him. Otherwise, his temper would get more violent, and he would be easier to anger. Also, the more he got angry, the more it nourished his dark energy. Sooner or later, he would be consumed by his other self. Thus, Long Chen had been planning on peacefully accompanying Yu Qingxuan in the Vermilion Bird Empire this time. He wanted to distance himself from killing and fighting, letting his heart settle down for a bit. However, when he arrived in the Vermilion Bird Empire, he faced all kinds of provocation that he was fed up with. This person even went further, instantly causing Long Chen's killing intent to explode. A dragon? Ah, oh, what ignorant arrogance. Just try to receive this attack. With a hearty laughter, the red-haired man's manifestation burst into existence, radiating an untamed aura that surged with unparalleled power. In an instant, the might of a supreme bone and supreme blood exuded from him. His aura was instantly unleashed to his peak, causing a powerful pressure to crash down upon Long Chen. When this happened, the surrounding buildings unleashed a light barrier around this place. Clearly, this place was set up for fights. You have supreme blood and a supreme bone, but there are no signs of them merging. Your confidence is misguided. Long Chen instantly saw through this person's power. This person's aura was ancient, so he was most likely a sealed expert. But curiously, the aura of his supreme bone and supreme blood was stiff, which meant that either he had been sealed for too long, or there was a problem with his seal. Although he had gone through the nourishment of primal chaos Kai, he still couldn't merge them. In other words, he would be stuck like this for the rest of his life, as he had lost any chance of merging his supremes. Bullshit! After the red-haired man roared, two streams of energy poured into his spear. Before this, he had been holding back a bit, but now he fully unleashed his power as he had already decided to kill Long Chen. Don't. Over ten experts appeared in the surroundings at once. They had just been in hiding to watch the fun, but seeing the red-haired man actually intending on killing Long Chen, they were shocked out of hiding. They were all Yu Kaiyangsu's guards, powerful experts in their own rights. As experts, they had their own pride. Hence, when they learned that Yu Kai Ying Su had actually wagered herself against Long Chen and been rejected, they were all shocked. At the same time, they were also envious in Reed. Come moreover, Yu Kai Ying Su had even used a scheme to con Long Chen into becoming her subordinate. So these guards were immediately interested and wanted to embarrass him to prove that he was nothing special. Also, they had discussed the plan already. They were only going to show Long Chen that he was nothing special, not actually harm his life. Otherwise, the princess would punish them severely. However, the red-haired man was too jealous and was rather eccentric. Also, due to losing his chance to merge his two supremes, his temper had not been good lately. Thus, when Long Chen's words antagonized him, he just wanted Long Chen dead. 
sensing the serious exchange those people immediately came out none of them would be able to escape responsibility if long chen was really slain however it was too late the red-haired man's spear had reached long chen just as everyone thought that long chen would be severely injured long chen's hand lightly wrapped around the spear catching it just like that after that the ground quivered slightly and a kai wave blasted out in every direction long chen's hand was wrapped around the spear head and he wasn't moved in the slightest in fact it didn't seem that a single hair on his head was moved out of place what seeing this scene all the experts present were stunned although this red-haired man wasn't the strongest out of all of them he was definitely not bad how could his full power attack be caught so easily barehanded they couldn't believe this just like them the red-haired man was also shocked his aura then raged as he tried to pull back his spear but no matter what he did he was unable to move his spear it was like it had stuck to long chen's hand have you considered my words long chen looked at the red-haired man emotionlessly akin to a god looking at an ant with clear disdain upon being underestimated like this the red-haired man's face twisted with fury the next moment his body suddenly lit up as flames burst out of him who ming have you gone crazy those guards all cried out in shock to their surprise hu ming was igniting his supreme blood and supreme bone to increase his power this had been nothing more than a test to put long chen in his place how had it become like this now everything was out of control however no matter how the red-haired man's power rose he was still unable to pull his spear out of long chen's hold suddenly the spear moved but it wasn't because the red-haired man had succeeded in pulling it out it was long chen shoving it forward as a result the base of the spear pierced the red-haired man's chest causing his aura to plummet the sharp pain woke him up and now there was no longer any fury in his eyes only fear i admit defeat said the red-haired man i told you not to provoke nice people or they wouldn't even give you a chance to kneel and beg for mercy long chen raised the spear lifting the red-haired man's body into the air his voice was icy without the slightest emotion you've already won stop the guards immediately rushed over to stop him with some attacking him while some moving to pull the red-haired man away scram with a roar a vague dragon cry reverberated throughout the world accompanied by the eruption of a sacred energy they all saw a sound wave spread after that all of them felt like a hammer had struck them blood sprayed out of their mouths and even the formation shielding this area shattered transforming into millions of runes that dissipated back into heaven and earth in read come chapter three thousand nine hundred sixty five princess detention those guards hacked up blood tumbling back like tumbleweeds their souls were almost torn apart by this one roar from long chen when the formation was broken an even larger barrier appeared over the entire princess mansion however even that formation rumbled the immense impact caused countless cracks to appear on it then in front of their stunned gazes this second formation also shattered in terror the guards stared at long chen who was still holding up that red-haired man that red-haired man's body was now covered in cracks and blood poured out of his seven orifices he was almost blown apart by that roar long chen what are you doing just then yu kaiang su's furious voice rang out princess save me this long chen is treacherous and violent i'd only wanted to exchange pointers with him but he wants to kill me the red-haired man shouted fearlessly once he saw yu kaiang su long chen put him down we can talk about this nicely yu kaiang su's expression was dark she didn't know what had happened but she could guess it we can talk nicely the main thing is if you talk nicely will people listen 
Long Chen shook his head. He then looked at the red-haired man. I told you not to provoke nice people. Just because they are nice doesn't mean that they don't have a temper. Also, nice people have no mercy once you anger them. Let alone Princess Kaiang Su, even if the Emperor of the Vermilion Bird Empire were to personally come, he wouldn't be able to protect your life. Go in peace, Long Chen. Yu Kaiang Su was shocked. No. With a quiver of the spear, the red-haired man exploded, turning into a bloody mist that rained upon the area. This attack didn't just destroy his physical body, but also his Yuan spirit. The guards stared at Long Chen in horror, looking at him like he was a blood-crazed fiend. On the other hand, Long Chen's expression was calm without the slightest ripple. It was as if he had done nothing at all, exuding exceptionally terrifying calmness. I don't have time to play such senseless games with you. Don't waste my precious time. Unless you're prepared to die, it would be best if you didn't try to enrage me. Long Chen's gaze swept over the guards. Long Chen had long since noticed that these guards only had high cultivation bases and talent, but their actual killing power was trash. To put it frankly, they possessed immense power but had never set foot on a battlefield. Having not gone through the baptism of blood and fire or experienced walking the line between life and death against true experts, they were unable to unleash even a fraction of their power before dying. Ignoring anything else, any dragon blood warrior from the three thousand worlds could kill them without any suspense despite not possessing that much power. A group of greenhouse flowers lauding each other and amusing themselves into thinking that they are important. I've seen plenty of people like you. You and I do not live in the same world. Your games are things that I stopped playing as a child. If you don't want to die, stay away from me, said Long Chen coldly. Long Chen didn't want to kill people, but if he didn't, there would be no way to scare off these idiotic children. Then all kinds of challenges and roadblocks would appear in his way. There was no way to peacefully cultivate like that. Moreover, he needed time to develop the seven-star battle armor. If these people stalled him, when the real powerful enemies came, he and the people by him would definitely die miserably. These people were now so terrified that they were like wooden chickens. As for Yu Kaiang Su, she was ashen with rage. Just as she was about to speak, the void quivered and a dozen divine venerates appeared. Long Chen's heart shook. These divine venerates were all double supremes and were wearing identical ropes with a sword hanging on their waists. It seemed that the Vermilion Bird Empire's foundation was truly shocking. Their leader frowned. Princess, how could you make such a mistake? Let's go. Yu Kaiyang Su's countenance darkened. Filled with indignant rage, she clenched her teeth furiously. Long Chen, just wait. Once I get back, I'll teach you how to behave. And you lot as well. Yu Kaiyang Su also pointed at her guards, causing their expressions to grow ugly. They didn't dare to look at her. Yu Kaiyang Su then snorted and left with those divine venerates, leaving Long Chen startled. Just what was going on? Why is she being brought away? asked Long Chen. The guards simply glanced at each other, and not one person spoke. Are you mute? If you want to be mute, I can help you out, threatened Long Chen. Hearing this threat, they cleared their throats. One of them hastily said, reporting to Senior, according to the Empire's laws, it is forbidden for a person's mansion to cause a disturbance that affects others. When you attacked just now, the mansion's grand formation wasn't fully activated. Thus, the sound was too loud, causing chaos and drawing over the palace's patrol. Therefore, the princess must be brought away. She will probably be punished with three days of detention. Three days of detention? Long Chen was stunned. It was just a loud noise, but the punishment was three days of detention. 
did the princesses of the empire not get to keep their dignity yes the empire holds the overseer responsible so the mistakes that the subordinates make will cause their superiors to also be punished perhaps others in the empire have it a bit better but the empire's laws are especially strict toward the imperial princes and princesses their punishments also far exceed that given to commoners explained that person no wonder yu kyang su was so furious long chen had never dreamed that yu kyang su would be the one punished after he killed someone that was a bit funny he wondered how many times he could send her there before she dismissed him long chen suddenly had an evil thought just as he did another group of experts came they were stronger than the current guards here amongst them were several familiar faces they were those that long chen had seen following yu kyang su so they were most likely her trusted aides these experts had ugly expressions and glared at long chen silently now that their boss was brought away they had no leader just like that long chen waited in the princess mansion for three days as expected after three days yu kyang su came back and her expression was rather frightening it was like she was going to eat someone however when she arrived she saw that long chen was in the residence she had arranged for him enjoying a luxurious breakfast he was actually eating with gusto when yu kyang su and her guards arrived he didn't even look at them instead focusing on his food long chen don't you need to give me an explanation after a moment yu kyang su couldn't hold back any more and shouted her voice full of fury that ominous gaze in her eyes was like she was going to start her breakfast by eating long chen in read com chapter three thousand nine hundred sixty six making the princess faint from rage what explanation do you want from me asked long chen after gulping down his food and wiping his mouth you have just arrived in my mansion and you already caused me to spend three days in solitary confinement why don't you tell me what explanation i'm asking for rage to you kyang su what does you being in solitary confinement have to do with me it was your unruly subordinate that wanted to take my life am i not allowed to fight back it's all your responsibility and has nothing to do with me also since we've signed a contract you need to give me a martial master status plate since you have time today get it done quickly said long chen to become a prince or princess's training partner was a recognition of one's power otherwise the prince or princess wouldn't sacrifice one of these precious spots as a result the person chosen would immediately be promoted from an ordinary martial artist into a martial master directly skipping the martial fighter rank a martial master already possessed a certain level of status with it you could directly join the army and become a squad captain rather than starting as a regular soldier also it was easier for squad captains to accumulate merit on the battlefield they would be able to advance through the ranks much faster you have the gall to ask me to issue you a martial master tablet yu kyang su frowned deeply just looking at his confident and bold appearance enraged her she couldn't believe her eyes that's what's written on the contract said long chen lightly all right then today you are my formal training partner we'll fight in a bit yu kyang su snorted and fished out a new status plate for him on one side were the words martial master while the other side had the mark of the princess mansion on it as well as her name in other words this martial master status plate was issued based on yu kyang su's approval if there were any problems she would also have responsibility for it long chen received it with a smile many thanks don't thank me too soon now that you're my formal training partner i have the authority to request a fight with you activate the mansion's eighteen grand formations 
shouted Yu Kainksu while looking at Long Chen like she was going to give him a vicious lesson. You shouldn't. Your Yang Kai is deficient, your Yin Kai is soaring, your Wara is turbulent, and your mind is in a severely weary state. You can't fight properly today. Pick another time, said Long Chen indifferently. Long Chen didn't know what the solitary confinement involved, but Yu Kaiengsu was clearly weary that even her mind was not in a good condition. For an expert like her to be weakened to this extent, it was as if she had been torture. According to the contract, you have no authority to decline. Even if I am not in my peak condition, I can still beat you, said Yu Kaiengsu coldly. According to the contract, there are conditions under which I can decline. For example, my body doesn't feel comfortable right now, said Long Chen. Why would you be uncomfortable? Rage to you, Kaiyang Su. Physiologically, you know men always feel uncomfortable a few days a month. Long Chen shrugged helplessly. You, you have no shame. Yu Kaiyang Su's hair stood on end from how angry she was and her guards looked at Long Chen dumbfoundedly. How could he even say such a reason? All right, since you're not comfortable, I order you to watch the main gate. Yu Kaiyang Su's voice was almost a howl. According to the contract, after becoming the training partner of a prince or princess, the prince or princess was obligated to provide the training partner with a good cultivation environment, a guarantee of safety, and a generous wage. However, not everyone got the same treatment. Some of them were not even important subordinates, but simply employees with better talents. Thus, as long as they weren't humiliated by the orders, they simply had to do their job well and they were set for life. Outside the capital was a giant park with towering trees and dense vegetation. There were all kinds of precious medicinal plants here. This was essentially a giant medicinal field, one of the imperial family's businesses, and it was currently under Yu Kaiyang Su's administration. Within the Vermilion Bird Empire, all the princes and princesses had their own businesses. Otherwise, if they just relied on the stipend given to them as members of the royal family, they wouldn't even be able to fully feed themselves, let alone their individual forces. Hence, the imperial family left a portion of its businesses to the princes, and princesses to manage. In other words, they could gain greater authority through proper management, and the profit from these businesses all went into their own pocket after deducting the taxes. But if they were to make any business mistakes, the royal family would take everything back at any moment. Since Long Chen refused to fight with Yu Kaiyang Su, Yu Kaiyang Su directly ordered him to guard the medicinal farm. This was rather humiliating work, but Long Chen was happy to do it. He had heard that there was a kind of spiritual creature called the lightning flash sable here. It was covered in purple fur and possessed a trace of thunder force. It wasn't particularly powerful, but it was incredibly fast, so it was very difficult to catch. It didn't injure people, but it would often sneak its way into the medicinal field to steal the fruit. Furthermore, it also had the special ability to pass through barrier formations. Perhaps if the grand formation was activated, it would be unable to pierce through. But keeping the formation activated at all times was untenable. The profits from the medicinal field would all be wasted on keeping up the formation. Thus, to save money, it was people who patrolled the fields and made sure to drive off the lightning flash, sables, and other pests. But when Long Chen arrived, he saw a few medicinal plants that he didn't have in the primal chaos space, so he decided to directly become an embezzler. However, while this medicinal field had millions of plants, not many were particularly precious. Long Chen only found a few hundred that he didn't have. After that, he went to the gate. He was preparing to keep studying the seven-star battle armor when a lightning flash sable ran up to him. It actually wasn't the slightest bit afraid of Long Chen and just chattered to him. So this medicinal field was your home. To his surprise, 
he was actually able to roughly understand the lighting flash sable's spiritual fluctuations before the medicinal field appeared this area was the home of the lightning flash sables but after the medicinal field was built these lightning flash sables were driven away they had no choice but to find lightning attribute plants for food but it was even harder to find them in other places it was much harsher for them hence it was asking long chan to be flexible and gather some for them this lightning flash sable mentioned that long chen had the blessing of the rainbow crane on him so he was definitely a good person that would help it long chen dug out a rock from the ground raising the fence and barrier gather your family and get as much as you can in any case it's not mine long chen directly sat and closed his eyes in meditation as a result less than half a day later Yu Qingxuan came running over frantically. When she saw thousands and thousands of lightning flash sables stealing from the medicinal field, she was ashen with rage. Long Chen, what are you doing? Watching over the gate? No, said Long Chen lazily. If you're watching the gate, why didn't you bother with all the lightning flash sables stealing the plants? Yu Qingxu pointed at the lightning flash sables that now fled hastily you told me to watch the gate and not anything else tell me did i lose the gate did it break under my watch asked long chen you you kyanksu felt her blood rushing up to her head at this moment she felt the world spinning around her and she collapsed inri com chapter three thousand nine hundred sixty seven little black room seen this Long Chen jumped in shock and hastily caught her. The other guards were also stunned. Considering how powerful Yu Kaingsu was, how could she faint from anger? Unlike Long Chen, they didn't have the guts to touch her. They didn't even dare to get close to her. It had to be known that Yu Kaingsu was a germaphobe that didn't like to touch anyone. In fact, people that tried to even get close to her drew her ire. After Long Chen pressed a finger on Yu Kaingsu's forehead, he frowned. Her willpower is severely taxed. She's almost out of mental energy. What happened in solitary confinement? It's the most terrifying mental torture. Within the little black room, you are cut off from the outside world. Without light and sound, it feels like time stops there. Within that darkness, everything seems to be nothing almost like dying also within that darkness your negative emotions grow i was once punished with it for a day but that single day felt as long as ten thousand years when i came out i was almost crazy it took a long time for me to recover as princess kyingsu was locked inside for three days for her mind to still be clear after coming out shows that she is indescribably powerful said one of the guards with a fearful expression as if he didn't even like to recall this torture that's right that little black room is so terrifying that you can only understand once you're locked inside it feels like a monster inside of you is going to be unleashed and devour your soul there's no way to describe that feeling of isolation terror and helplessness in that room you face all your weaknesses no matter how strong a person is, their willpower will crumble there, said another guard with the same terror in his eyes. Long Chen took out a medicinal pill and fed it to Yu Kaingsu. After that, his spiritual strength flowed into her, nourishing and stabilizing her soul. It's nothing major. She was just too emotional just now. Have her sleep a bit and she'll be fine. Bring her back to the princess mansion, said Long Chen. The guards just stared at him. No one stepped forward, and they actually stepped back. Long Chen was confused and somehow had a bad feeling. Upon looking down, he saw Yu Kaingsu's eyes flutter. She was waking up. Realizing something, Long Chen hastily shoved her away. Everyone cried out in shock. Yu Kaingsu was actually pushed onto the ground by Long Chen, but they just watched as she fell, 
not daring to catch her. That proved Long Chen's guess. Long Chen didn't push light enough, so Yu Kaing Su left a human shaped indent in the ground. Furthermore, just then, she woke up and crawled up. When she looked around, those guards retreated in terror. It wasn't us. Yu Kaing Su's gaze turned to Long Chen. In an instant, the fury in her eyes erupted. In read, Kam Long Chen hastily said, I gave you a medicinal pill to regather your will that was on the verge of collapsing. Otherwise, there was a danger of your Yuan spirit dispersing. I heard that you don't like touching anyone, so to express my innocence. After saving you, I'd put you down. It's an expression of my respect for you. Respect? Then you must respect me very much. Were you planning on planting me here? Or were you just going to bury me and leave it at that? Yu Kaing Su pointed at the hole in the ground. Isn't that because I was afraid of a misunderstanding? In my hurry, I might have been a bit too heavy-handed. I apologize. But no matter how you put it, I took the risk of being cursed by you in order to save you. That's better than just watching and not saving you, right? You can't just curse me alone, all right. Long Chen pointed at those guards, causing their expressions to change. Yu Kaing Su instantly whirled upon those guards, a layer of frost covering her face. The fury in her eyes almost made them ignite. All of you scram. Those guards hastily fled, but their terrified expressions gradually turned into one of relief once they were far away. Now, Princess Kingsu's fury would be cast only on one person. Once they were gone, Yu Kaingsu took out her sword and pointed it at Long Chen. I've had enough of you. If this keeps going, I'll die of rage because of you. We are going to fight. And if I win, everything you have will be mine, including you. If I lose, everything I have will be yours, including myself. Do you accept it or not? Long Chen stared at her, feeling dumbfounded. This temper was a bit too much like her father's, wasn't it? This was too decisive. Why are you acting like this? Didn't you just lose some stuff? If you want, I'll accompany you. Don't get so angry, advised Long Chen. Do you think I care about this money? You just pissed me off. How are you going to make up for that? Raged you, Kain Ksu. I don't have any solution for that. H.M., how about you just swallow it? Suggested Long Chan helplessly, are you telling me to choke on my anger? You want me to die? Yu Kain Ksu was further incensed that flames sprouted above her head. That's not what I meant. In life, how can everything simply go as you please? Things are usually only 50% satisfactory. Sometimes we simply have to learn to be happy with what we have. Tell me, don't you think that this principle is correct? Long Chen smiled. Your smile is very loathsome, said Yu Kaing Su coldly. Your smile is very beautiful. So we're good, right? Long Chen was speechless. Had this child's head grown muddled from being burned? You really refuse to fight me? Demanded Yu Kaing Su. Give it up. Girl, to tell the truth, you people are children in front of me. Let alone in your current weakened state, even in your peak condition, you wouldn't be able to receive three moves from me. Don't be stubborn and refuse to accept reality. Let me put it to you this way. I've killed more people than you have ever seen in your entire life. So I've long since grown tired of fighting for fame or power. I can instantly see through your power, and you are unable to threaten me. What is the point of competing? Other than that, I never treat such competitions as games. I only train killing moves. When I attack, it is to kill. Either you die or I die. The two of us have no enmity that requires one of us to die. In fact, you are my future sister-in-law. Why would I fight to the death with you? said Long Chen kindly. 
Long Chen could already see that Yu Kaing Su might not be a kind person, but she wasn't an evil person either. After all, they would be family in the future. There was no need to be so stubborn. Long Chen was even planning on using her platform to get closer to Yu Qingxuan. Without an honorable fight, how can you tell who is stronger and who is weaker? You're my training partner, so you have a responsibility to accompany me in battle. I refuse to believe that I can't beat you. If you refuse, I'll think of anything I can to torment you until you accept. There is no need for you to watch this gate. Go raise my fish, ordered Yu Kaingsu coldly. As a result, Long Chen was moved from the medicinal field and sent to the royal family's fishing ground. After placing him there, Yu Kaingsu returned to her own residence. She refused to believe that Long Chen wouldn't submit. Just as she started to recuperate and entered a meditative state, someone came running over in a panic, practically wailing. Princess, not good. Something terrible has happened. Long Chen, he, he cooked his majesty's most beloved seven-colored dragon fish. What the... Yu Kaing Su's soul almost fled in terror. That was one of the emperor's treasures. In read, Calm Chapter 3968, Escaping the Sea of Bitterness, Brother Yifeng, you have a knack for arriving at the right time. I just finished cooking this fish. Come, let's have a feast. A three-foot-long fish that looked a bit like a swamp. Eel was being grilled at the moment. The oil was running down its body, and its fragrant smell made people drool. Long Chen took out two elegant wine bowls and poured out some wine. Wow, big brother, you know how to live. When I heard that Princess Kaing Su sent you to raise fish, I thought that you would be depressed. But your attitude is good. Let me raise you a toast as an apology for my mistake. Ju Yifeng had originally come to comfort Long Chen. After all, his current position was caused by him. Even if he was cursed by Long Chen, he had to accept it. Unexpectedly, Long Chen was doing very well and was actually cooking fish here. The fishing ground here was the royal families, so they only raised precious species of fish. Hence, the meat of these fish was exceptionally delicious and also had a nourishing effect. It could be directly turned into a medicinal pill. As they were top-grade fish with shocking value, ordinary people couldn't afford to eat them. Aha, that's nothing. But I'll drink to it. Long Chen laughed. It was only once he arrived that he found that this was actually a good place. How could he not? There were many precious fish here, and Long Chen didn't plan to just watch them. He had been looking for a good fish to eat when he noticed a golden dragon fish bearing its fangs at him. Long Chen naturally decided to pick it up and tossed it onto the grill. Wow, this wine is amazing! Chu Yifeng exclaimed. It was his first time drinking such fine wine. Wait, is this from that, of course? Other than the wine god Palace, who can produce such divine wine? Drink as much as you want. Long Chen had almost no friends in the Vermilion Bird Empire. Hence, when a friend had come to drink with him, he was happy and directly filled his bowl again in Ri. Kamju Yefen drank three bowls, overjoyed with this feeling. So this world actually possessed such beautiful wine. In comparison, the other fine wines that he had drunk were water. Don't just drink the wine. Let's eat the fish too. I have a feeling that this is no ordinary fish. Its meat will definitely be delicious. Long Chen used chopsticks to send a mouthful of the fish into Zhu Yifeng's mouth. It instantly melted, its juices filling his mouth. It was fatty, but not greasy. It was exceptionally delicious. Wow, what fish is this? It's so delicious. I've never tasted it before. Zhu Yifeng tasted the fish, and his eyes lit up. This fish was better than all the other fish he had ever tasted as a prince of the empire. I don't know the name of the fish, but if you like it, 
I'll fish up a few more for you. In any case, I'm in charge here. Furthermore, Princess Kainksu isn't bad. She sent me medicinal plants and fish. I might have misjudged her. Let's raise another toast. With the fish's meat in his mouth, Long Chan raised his wine bowl again. Zhu Yifeng sighed with satisfaction. He felt like he had reached the peak of his life. Big brother, I can say that Princess Kainksu might have a bad temper, but she actually isn't much of a schemer. She is the one who poses the least threat to me amongst the princes and princesses. That's the only reason I dared to come here. If it was someone else, I wouldn't dare to come. I'd be afraid that they would do something to me, sighed Ju Yifen. Exactly. This isn't a bad place. Once I marry King Shuen, I'll make sure that she lives a carefree life away from this scheming place. Let's make sure that the wine doesn't stop. Long Chen raised his wine bowl again. The two of them chatted as they drank and ate. Ju Yifeng seemed to have found a confidante and began to spout all his complaints. For example, his mother was too harsh, his father was too cold, and his brothers and sisters were fighting each other. It was like he was lost in the sea of bitterness. I don't know when I'll be able to escape the sea of bitterness, Sai Ju Yifen, you'll be able to escape the sea of bitterness very soon. Just then an icy voice rang out. It was Yu Kaing Su's. At this moment, icy killing intent radiated out of her, and she glared at Long Chen like she was going to eat him alive. Yu Kaing Su had hundreds of guards with her, many of which Long Chen had not seen before. All of them were powerful experts and some of them did not possess weaker auras than Yu Kainksu herself. Oh, there are so many of you. Sorry, but I only cooked one fish. It's not enough for all of you. If you had told me you were coming, I would have cooked a few more, said Long Chen. Princess Kainksu, sit. Let's eat together. This fish is too delicious. And there's wine, too. Yu Yifeng pulled out a seat for Yu Kainksu. You can eat it yourself. This might just be your final meal. Make sure to eat more so that you don't lose out, said Yu Kainksu frostily. Princess Kainksu, what are you saying? Isn't it just a fish? You wouldn't kill the two of us for that right. Ju Yifeng laughed awkwardly. I won't kill you, but someone else will. You two fools have also implicated me. Long Chen, you ill omen, are you trying to get me killed? Raged Yu Kaing Su, her patience gone. Ju Yifeng's expression changed, and he suddenly had a bad feeling. As he looked back at the grilled fish, his heart thudded. With a quivering voice, he asked, Big brother, did this fish have seven colors? Nope. Long Chen shook his head. Oh, thank goodness. I almost pissed myself. As long as it's not seven colors, it's fine. Ju Yifeng sighed with relief. Why don't you tell me how many colors its scales had? Asked Yu Kaing Su. Five, said Long Chen directly. He remembered this. Then adding on the lips and whiskers, said Yu Kaing Su coldly. I wasn't paying attention. Now that you mention it, though, it seems that they were different colors. Long Chen nodded. Pesh, brother Zhu, what's wrong? Why do you look like that? Long Chen saw Zhu Yifeng sitting on the ground, his face pale, and his entire body limp. Big brother, we're dead. We're definitely dead. You cooked my imperial father's most beloved seven-colored dragon fish. Zhu Yifeng wept, scared out of his wits. No wonder it was so delicious. So it's what the emperor eats, exclaimed Long Chen. You don't know anything. That was the seven-color dragon fish my imperial father was raising as a tonic. Its gallbladder is used to refine the three-flower heaven ascension pill. Do you know what the three-flower heaven ascension pill is? Yu Kainksu had the urge to kill Long Chen. 
he still hadn't realized just how grave of a mistake this was. He thought it was as simple as just eating a fish. I know. It's used by an earth venerate to become a heaven venerate. The seven-color dragon fish's gallbladder is one of the main ingredients, said Long Chen lightly. You know, the vermilion bird empire only has a single seven-color dragon fish. And you, you, you still cooked it. Yu Kaiyang Su lacked the words to express her rage. She then grabbed Long Chen's collar, almost spraying saliva into his face as she no longer cared about royal etiquette. His Majesty has arrived. Just then, a eunuch's voice rang out. After that, Long Chen felt a flaming aura approaching. Those flames were flames of fury. In read, com chapter 3969, let's call it even the Vermilion Bird Empire's Emperor Yu Xiaoyan walked over with his hands clasped behind his back. He was accompanied by several eunuchs and a group of guards. At this moment, seeing his gloomy face, Yu Kaing Su and Zhu Yifen hastily knelt. Greetings, Imperial Father. Yu Kaing Su's guards also knelt and directly kowtowed, not daring to make a sound. However, Yu Xiaoyan didn't even look at Yu Kaing Su and Zhu Yifen. He coldly gazed at Long Chen. Rat, your butts are big. Many thanks for your praise. I have no other strong points, but at least my guts are a bit big. Long Chen looked right back at Yu Xiaoyan. At first, he wasn't sure what to do, but as soon as Yu Xiaoyan spoke, he was confident. Do you know what kind of fish you just ate? shouted Yu Xiaoyan. I didn't know before this, but I learned later. However, it was too late. Once a tree is turned into a boat, it cannot be turned back into a tree. Why doesn't your majesty calm your anger and take a few bites? I have wine too, chortled Long Chen. Yu Kaiyang Su and Zhu Yifeng almost collapsed when they heard this. This fellow's guts were too big, weren't they? He even dared to say such a thing, as if he was the one treating the emperor to his priceless seven-colored dragon fish. Will you believe me if I say that I will kill you with a single slap? Yu Xiaoyan almost exploded due to rage. I don't believe it. Isn't my sin just eating a single fish? I'm your future son-in-law. My life is more precious than a fish. You won't kill me for a fish, deduced Long Chen confidently. Yu Xiaoyan raged. What nonsense are you spouting about? There isn't even a sign of success yet, but you dare to say that you're my son-in-law. You are nothing more than a commoner. No, I'm a noble martial master. Thank you. Long Chen revealed his status plate confidently. The status of a martial master was much higher than an ordinary commoner. Seeing this, Yu Kaiyang Su quivered furiously. This Long Chen really was out to get her. For him to show off the martial master tablet that she had given him, he was clearly trying to get her killed. If the emperor wasn't here, she would definitely beat him up for this. Even if he wanted to con her, he didn't need to go this far right. Let alone a martial master, even if you were my son-in-law, having committed this sin, I still have the right to execute you, said Yu Xiaoyan frostily. What sin did I make? Long Chen acted stupid. You killed the seven-colored dragon fish that I was raising for centuries. Is that not a sin? shouted Yu Xiaoyan. And then... How are you going to punish me? Killing me as revenge for your fish. That's absurd, isn't it? Long Chen shrugged indifferently. Yun, although eating his dragon fish was hateful, the emperor knew that using this reason to kill Long Chen was impossible. There was no such law. Furthermore, Long Chen was not a prince or princess. The emperor couldn't treat him as his own family. Using the laws, the most he could do was force Long Chen to pay compensation for the fish and then be imprisoned for a month. I won't kill you, but I can banish you from the empire. You will never set foot in the Vermilion Bird Empire again, 
threatened you Zion. No, you won't do that either. And why not? demanded you Zion. A person who eats someone else's food is biased toward them. I ate your fish, so I won't quibble with you about that. But using this excuse to banish me is impossible for you, said Long Chen. Ha ha ha, you think you're clever. I don't like you anyway, so why can't I banish you? sneered Yu Zion. Precisely because a person who eats someone else's food is biased toward them. I ate your fish, but you also drank my wine. We're even. I don't believe that you will do this, or your reputation will be ruined. I think that you should consider this, your majesty. Long Chen smiled. Nonsense. When did I ever? You, you. Yu Zidoan suddenly thought of something and grew bewildered. That's right, the vermilion bird pear flower wine. Long Chen chortled. He didn't keep going. You, Yu Zidoan quivered with rage. He now understood that the vermilion bird pear flower wine that he had drunk was not from Jiang Huixin's family's elders. It was from Long Chen in Reed. Calm now that Long Chen brought it up. Although he hadn't known the truth, it didn't change reality. With this, there was no way that he could use Long Chen eating his seven treasure dragon fish to banish him. After a long moment of Yu Zioyan not knowing what to say, he barked, Fine, brat, count yourself ruthless. But while banishment can be avoided, punishment cannot. Of the three of you, one failed to control your subordinate, one made friends recklessly and one ate my seven-colored dragon fish. All of you are going into the little black room for three days. Hearing that, Yu Kaiyang Su's expression changed. She had just come out of it after being imprisoned for three days. If she were to go through it again in her current state, her mind would crumble and she would go crazy. As for Zhu Yifeng, he directly fell limply. His willpower was too weak. At most, he could last within the little black room for a single day. Three days was deadly to him. However, neither of them dared to argue. The emperor was enraged right now, so any arguments would only cause the punishment to worsen. This matter has nothing to do with them, so I will bear responsibility for everything. You can add their days to mine. Three threes is nine. So let's just be straightforward and add another day for a perfect ten. How's that? You're not losing out, right? Said Long Chen indifferently. You're crazy. No one has survived more than seven days in the little black room. Yu Kaixu was so shocked that she even forgot about the emperor's rage. Do you think that I'm bargaining with you? What right do you have to bargain? Raged Yu Xiaoan. I don't like hearing you talk this way. To put it frankly, you are only punishing them, not because they did anything wrong, but because you are venting your anger on them. If you were simply educating your children, using your own methods to make them mature, I naturally wouldn't express any opinion. But you are clearly using them to vent. Don't you think that will damage your image as ruler of a nation? A nobleman? The King Dao, they all require restraint. The more noble a person, the more restrained they will be. But I can't see a single bit of it on you. If you are still set on punishing the two of them, then perhaps I have to go to the appeals hall to make a report. I'll tell them that you abused your position to punish them without any respect for the laws, fairness, or justice, just because of your bias against me. Those seniors will judge that matter, said Long Chen, neither tyrannical nor subserviently. Yu Kaiyang Su and Zhu Yifeng were startled. In all their years, this was their first time seeing someone who dared to speak like this to the emperor. Long Chen was actually threatening him. Good, good. Brat, you have guts. Then we'll do as you say. Don't blame me for not warning you. The record for lasting in the little black room is six days. I don't even know how many people have died inside. Do you really want to take their punishment and go inside for ten days? 
although i have no noble status or position i know that a man's word is worth its weight in gold i will not take back what i said could i want to see whether your mouth is tougher than your will yu zioan turned and walked away but he suddenly paused and looked at the grilled dragon fish and wine guards grab all the evidence of the crime from me long chen yu kaing su zhu yifeng bookmark this website inread come to update the latest novels chapter three thousand nine hundred seventy the aura of hell your majesty you cannot send long chen into the little black room he has such a strong heart devil don't tell me that you can't see it this is no joke within a pavilion by the lake inside the royal garden yu zioan was seated in front of a grill eating fish and drinking wine jiang huixin and zhu langxin came running over zhu langxin directly scolded the emperor feeling a bit angry with their cultivation bases being at their current realm they could easily sense the state of a person's heart just by looking into their eyes also long chen had not set up any defenses against them so they could all see the powerful heart devil within him the little black room was something that tempered a person's will and it drew out a person's negative emotions to test them although it was called a punishment for princes and princesses in truth it was just a kind of trial and training however for those with heart devils the little black room was a death sentence furthermore it was the cruelest most painful kind of death sentence as a person would die while tormented by their heart devil once the heart devil took control over the soul the person inside would die without a doubt there was no cure no saving them you can't put it that way that brat wanted to go in himself don't forget that i didn't force him furthermore i even warned him so you can't blame me hmph i still haven't settled things with you two either you caused me to lose face well i suppose i've gotten a bit of compensation yu zioan looked at them unhappily it was because of them covering up the origin of the vermilion bird pear flower wine that he had left himself open to long chen's words thus he was still a bit angry your majesty zhu lengson frowned and wanted to continue arguing but jiang huixin grabbed her arm and smiled your majesty is a wise and noble man and everything is under your control let's not worry ourselves anyway this is a rare chance for us to accompany his majesty to eat and drink this is your seven-colored dragon fish is it not it looks very delicious hmph it's a good thing i got there early enough most of it was still left otherwise those two bastards would have eaten it all but that brat's cooking skill really isn't bad he didn't ruin its flavor let's eat together come there are no outsiders here gestured you zioan the great emperor of a powerful empire was actually eating other people's leftovers if that were to spread it would definitely cause everyone to laugh at him thus uzioan had ordered everyone to leave and activated a formation to prevent them from learning about it in truth long chen and zhu yifeng had not eaten that much it was so delicious that they were eating it slowly to truly savor the flavor long chen had also taken out a jug of wine packed with no less than two hundred liters of wine he had been planning on drinking to his heart's content with Zhu Yifeng, but now it was all Yu Zioan's. It was only after confiscating this booty that Yu Zioan felt a bit better inside. With just a few mouthfuls of the fish, they were sprouting endless praise. One reason was that the seven-colored dragon fish's meat was just that delicious, while another reason was that Long Chen's cooking skills were unmatched. As an alchemist, he knew how to best draw out the taste of the meat and the seasonings he used only added to its flavor it could only be called perfect the meat was good meat and the wine was good wine jiang huixin suddenly said the two of us sisters really have to thank that child long chen 
if it weren't for him his majesty would never be willing to cook this fish for us to eat zu langson also smiled this seven-color dragon fish was exceptionally precious if long chen hadn't come they would really never know just how it tasted what are you saying am i such a stingy man if you want fish you just have to ask declared yu Zioin awkwardly of course the fish was already dead which was the only reason he said such a thing if it was still alive there was no way that he would be willing to eat it long chen will he asked zu langsen empress don't worry about it i'm already ordered someone to install a formation inside everything will be under my control i just want that arrogant brat to pay for his actions said yu Zioyan, hearing that jiang huixin and zu langsen were relieved as long as yu Zioyan allowed long chen to back out before it was too late it was fine long chen are you really going in i'm telling you no one has survived even seven days of the little black room you're being brash once yu Zioyan left yu kaing su turned to long chen with a complicated expression she hadn't expected long chen to be so righteous and actually take full responsibility for this matter of course all of it was really caused by him ju yifin clenched his teeth big brother we should just admit that we were wrong to his majesty beg him to go back to three days for each of us long chen looked at ju yifin this little fellow was loyal and willing to sacrifice long chen smiled your will is so weak there is no knee he then turned to yu kaiangsu in truth i'm a very good person i also look very good yu kaiangsu furiously cursed what's the point of saying such nonsense had it solve your current predicament long chen continued to smile i'm always assured of what i do i won't use my life as a joke so i have my own reason for entering the little black room don't worry after saying that long chan was brought away by the imperial bards the moment they tried to put chains on him long chen turned hostile don't provoke me or i'll slap you long chen was not a prince or princess so he didn't need to abide by the royal family's rules but upon hearing this those guards expressions sank just as they were about to get angry their elderly leader said it's fine this elder could count as tactful knowing how to judge a situation before acting long chen didn't even give face to the emperor let alone to the likes of them right now they still didn't understand long chen perhaps if they were to treat him the same way as a prince or princess they would be the ones to suffer after that long chen was brought to a square-shaped palace it was perfectly square and its whole body was pitched black the kind of black that seemed to devour the light just getting close to it made the sun's rays feel darker at the same time a particular aura washed over them causing long chen to be startled the aura of hell this aura was familiar it was very similar to the aura of hell which could draw out a person's most primal fears even the guards were practically shivering as they looked at the black palace the stone gates slowly rose once inside they saw an even larger palace in truth this was a visual misperception the space inside just looked bigger than the palace outside these guards didn't move once they reached the gate long chen then pressed on and passed through eighteen palaces and they only grew larger and larger blacker and blacker as he proceeded the path behind him grew further and further away it was like he was walking into the abyss of death once he entered the eighteenth gate the stone gates slammed down one by one after that the world fell silent there was no light there was no sound he was within endless darkness endless shadow endless terror and endless loneliness at the same time waves of negative emotions washed over long chen if an ordinary person came here 
their will would instantly crumble. Even cultivators were unable to endure this terrifying darkness. However, Long Chen simply smiled and sat on the ground. He closed his eyes and patiently sensed the darkness. Inri, come, come out. Let's have a chat. Inri, come, chapter 3971, The True Me. Long Chen waited a long time, but everything was still deathly still. Thankfully, Long Chen was in no rush, so he patiently waited. Long Chen sat on the ground lotus style as if entering meditation. This endless darkness made him feel particularly peaceful for some reason. Time passed bit by bit. One day, two days, three days. Long Chen was still sitting there motionlessly, as if he really had entered a meditative state. Within the palace, Yu Xiaoyan, Jiang Huixin, and Zhu Langxin were staring at a mirror, bewildered. Was the little black room broken? This little black room was a place that ignored a person's cultivation base and realm. No matter how strong someone was, as long as they had the slightest weakness, it would be magnified endlessly. Negative emotions would attack them, and they could only bitterly endure that torment until the time was up. This was a place where every day felt as long as a hundred years, every breath was torture, while loneliness, fear, solitude, worry, despair, and other negative emotions were like devils within their bodies, running rampant. No one was able to fight back. Even the three of them would be in a difficult situation if they entered the little black room. Every time they came out, they would be weary to the bone and would need to recuperate for a few days. However, this was not a punishment, as they entered voluntarily, using it to temper their wills. For them, one day might be nothing, but by the second day, things would get hard, and the third day was pushing them to their limit. Once they were at that point, they could only endure another two days. Five days was their longest record. Furthermore, the longest stay in the little black room without dying throughout all of history was only six days. However, Long Chen was currently sitting relaxingly inside. It had already been three days, but he seemed completely fine, causing the three of them to be dumbfounded. There are only ten days, and three days have passed. Are you really refusing to see me? said Long Chen. Even so, no one replied to him. As his voice was submerged in the darkness, he didn't even hear it himself. However, Long Chen still remained patient. He continued to just sit there, patiently waiting. The fourth day, the fifth day, and the sixth day passed. Yu Xiaoyan and the other two grew increasingly shocked. Just what was going on? Such a thing had never occurred before. It was on the seventh day that a black figure finally appeared in front of Long Chen. At that moment, Yu Xiaoyan and the others instantly shot up. Suddenly, a hand shot out of this clump of black, Kai, causing the mirror to instantly turn dark. They couldn't see anything. That is Long Chen's heart devil. It noticed us. The three of them were shocked. They finally understood what Long Chen was waiting for. He wanted to face his heart devil. What do we do? Should we open the room? Wondered Zhu Langson. Jiang Huixin thought about it and said, No. Long Chen is borrowing the power of the room to draw out his heart devil. He must have his own plan. A smart child like him won't play around with his own life. Yu Xiaoyan then made some hand seals. The mirror was flickering, but they only saw darkness. It's useless. Long Chen's heart devil seems to have been waiting for this. It doesn't want us to see it. Furthermore, it is borrowing the power of the little black room to block our vision, advised Jiang Huixin. Only when Yu Xiaoyan heard that did he give up. However, he still felt uneasy when he looked at that pitch black mirror within the darkness. Human nature is goodness. What nonsense. Humans are naturally evil. Before you even know anything, when you see a beautiful flower, 
your first instinct is to grab it, plucking it with your hand. When you see a clean wall, your first thought is to draw on top of it and make it dirty. Your true character is darkness. That is why you feel like a fish in water in this dark world full of negative emotions. However, you keep choosing to walk toward the light. You are not just limiting yourself. You are suppressing yourself. Otherwise, if you were just following your innate nature, would living be so tiring? That voice belonged to the other Long Chen, Long Chen's heart devil. Long Chen knew that it would become active here. As expected, he had appeared. Long Chen clapped. You really have grown. You actually came out to see me instead of directly suppressing me like before and trying to violently take control. When besieging a city, it's a siege on the people's hearts. For you to use this method is quite unexpected for me. At this moment, space quivered and a person who looked identical to Long Chen appeared in front of him. As soon as he appeared, surprisingly, a trace of light appeared in this dark world. Long Chen and his heart devil looked at each other. The only difference in appearance between Long Chen and his heart devil was their eyes. Long Chen's eyes were black and white, while the heart devil's eyes were pitch black, akin to black holes that would devour the entire universe. See to the heart, I understand you, but you don't understand me. You drew me out to have a fight with me, wanting to use a victory to dissolve your fear of me. You thought you have learned a few powerful techniques from that dragon expert, and now is your best chance to beat me, right? But I suppose you never realized that this room is the core of a dark world's star field. I possess endless power here. If we were to fight, you stood no chance. Furthermore, with your pride, you won't use the Vermilion Bird Empire's emperor to help suppress me. You have your own pride, but I also have my own. I disdain using this core's power to deal with you. When it comes to power, you aren't a match for me. And when it comes to growth rate, you are a far cry from me. I am in no rush. The more you suppress me, the faster I grow. If you were to release my true self, I would control this body. I can already see the future. In the future, the entire world will be mine. Are you sure that you are the true me? Of course. I am your innate self, your instinctual self. I am the true you. As for you, you are the result of constantly suppressing your desires, your instincts, and your character. Others might be able to do that, but you cannot. Others can wantonly slaughter, but you can't. You suppressed me to give yourself a halo of light and kindness for others to see. But it's all fake. On the other hand, I am real. All things have their own character. Since I can exist in this world, I am qualified to rule the world. White and black, right and wrong, what do they have to do with me? What I want is to become the king of this world. Follow me and prosper, defy me and die. I will be the right and wrong of this world. You mean that people should do whatever they want at any moment? That any despicable or shameless thing can be done because you are the one who decides right or wrong? Since that's the case, you are the true me? Asked Long Chen. Correct. Is it because you are capable of using any kind of treacherous move without caring the slightest bit about your face? Of course. Then there's nothing for me to feel embarrassed about. Long Chen suddenly formed hand seals. The next moment, the void split open and a bronze cauldron swallowed the other Long Chen. In read, come chapter 3972, despicably shameless you want to play schemes. The other Long Chen roared, but it was too late for him to dodge. Long Chen had long since prepared this, and didn't give him any chance to do as he wished. Boom! As the bronze cauldron slammed down, flames and lightning weaved into a barrier around its mouth, trapping the other Long Chen inside the bronze cauldron. Long Chen, you are despicable and shameless. The other Long Chen roared from within the bronze cauldron. 
He then tried to charge out of the cauldron, but it didn't budge in the slightest. Even with all his power, he was unable to cause a ripple in the cauldron. He he, no, no, this isn't called shamelessness. It is returning to my true self. Isn't that what you just taught me? A person should live happily and as they please, right? Isn't that what you said? Why are you so hypocritical? Laughed Long Chen. Boot. Suddenly, the bronze cauldron flipped over. Lei Linger and Huel Linger's power erupted as they kept the seal on. You wish to seal me? Keep dreaming. Boot. With a crazed roar, a powerful explosion erupted and the seal composed of Huel Linger and Lei Linger's power cracked, almost breaking. It had to be known that Long Chen had been planning this for several days. In order to be sure of success, he had had the two of them accumulate all their power. They didn't hold back in the slightest. However, the other Long Chen was just too powerful. Even all their powers combined were unable to contain him for long. Boom! In read, come just then, the cauldron's lid slammed shut, sealing the cauldron for good. Most cauldrons didn't have a lid, but this bronze cauldron did. When the lid slammed shut, a furious roar came from within the cauldron. Long Chen, just you wait. Next time I won't waste words with you. I will directly take control of that body. Just you wait. You are so boring. When I am bright and kind, you call me fake. When I am sinister and treacherous, you call me despicably shameless. You say that you are the true me, but I don't believe it. We are two sides of the same person. Time will prove everything. This cauldron isn't something that you can control. You cannot seal me forever. It won't be long before I'm out, and when I do I will properly settle this debt with you, roared the other Long Chen. Calm yourself. I wasn't planning on sealing you forever anyway. Even so, you can be a thief for a thousand days in a row, but you can't be on guard against a thief for a thousand days in a row. If I'm always on guard against you, it would be too tiring. It just so happens that I could use a vacation. I'll relax, and once I'm in top condition, we can fight once more. Long Chen smiled brightly. Just you wait. You will pay a price for your foolishness. The other Long Chen roared and then fell silent. Long Chen examined the bronze cauldron. The lid fit seamlessly without the slightest gap anywhere, but he could still sense dark energy slowly oozing out from between the lid and the cauldron. Long Chen knew that this was his heart devil's power. Just as his heart devil said, although Long Chen had sealed him inside the cauldron, Long Chen could not truly control it, so this could not be a perfect seal. The heart devil's power was constantly escaping. Sooner or later, he would escape. However, that was a matter for the future. At least, in the near future, he wouldn't have to worry about his heart devil causing trouble. It could be said that this plan had gone off perfectly. When Huel Linger and Lei Linger returned to the primal chaos space, Long Chen's heart shook. In that brief moment, their cores were badly damaged by the attack of his heart devil. That shocked him. It had to be known that he hadn't given his heart devil any time to accumulate power. In other words, that had been nothing more than an ordinary attack. However, even such an ordinary attack could damage Lei Linger and Huo Linger's cores. That was something that Long Chen was not capable of. Fortunately, he had won by outsmarting his heart devil. If they were to truly fight, even with the dragon race's divine abilities, Long Chen really would have no assurance in beating him. Fuck, why does he grow so quickly? He doesn't even have to do anything, but his power keeps climbing. That's so unfair, cursed Long Chen. Even so, having resolved the danger of his heart devil allowed Long Chen to relax temporarily. Within this endless darkness, he felt an indescribable peace as if the darkness was his home. Here, his heart was at peace. Not bed. You've temporarily dealt with your heart devil. 
Now, you can peacefully focus on researching the Seven Star Battle Armor without worrying about him taking control when you are weakened. The Dragon Expert's voice rang out in his mind. Senior, I've already thought of hundreds of possibilities. Can I try condensing a new Seven Star Battle Armor now? Asked Long Chen, excited to hear the Dragon Expert's opinion. Long Chen had been itching to start testing the new Seven Star Battle Armor, but the Dragon Expert hadn't said anything all this time, so he hadn't dared to mess around. Your current power is not enough. My suggestion is that you wait until you reach 3,000 Dragon Power before condensing the Seven Star Battle Armor. That way, the risk will be at its lowest. You know what kind of luck you have. You can't hope to live off of luck, so you must make progress slowly and steadily. What is 3,000 Dragon Power? asked Long Chen. It's a power measuring scale of the dragon race, and some ancient inheritances continue to use this standard. There is such a standard in the Vermilion Bird Empire as well. When you have time, you can go test yourself, and you'll know, said the dragon expert. After saying that, the dragon expert fell silent. Long Chen tried asking several questions, but there was no response. It was as if it had cut off their connection. Long Chen didn't mind this. In any case, he had resolved the greatest crisis right now, so he felt much more relaxed. He took out a bed, and just like that, started sleeping in the little black room. The days that he had to live with a heart devil were very tough. It was a constant strain on his mind, a constant pressure on his spirit. He had to be constantly wary of his heart devil influencing him. Thus, it had been a long time since he had properly slept without the constant fear of being invaded by his heart devil in his dreams. With his heart devil sealed, he could finally sleep in peace. He entered a land of dreams as soon as his head hit the pillow. Inside the palace, Yu Ziyuan and the others didn't see the heart devil. It was only when Long Chen put away the heart devil that the mirror revealed the situation in the little black room. At that time, Long Chen was already sleeping peacefully. The three of them stared at each other, not knowing what had just happened. But Long Chen was sleeping peacefully in the little black room now, looking so sweet and peaceful. Long Chen then slept for three days and nights. In his dreams, he was in the martial heaven continent. He saw his father, his mother, and his little sister. His whole family ate together. After that, Meng Kai, Chu Yao, Tang Wan Er, Yi Jiqiu, Dong Minjiu, Zai Yan, Liu Ryan, and the others joined them as well. Long Chen was so excited that he switched out the table for an even bigger one. Just as they sat down, a gate opened and divine light spilled forth, illuminating two figures. Although he couldn't see their faces, Long Chen still cried out, Dad, Mom, a pair of warm hands caressed his cheeks. Long Chen then wept, holding on to those hands. Mom, do you know how much your child misses you? I always see you in my dreams. But when I wake up, you're gone. Can you not leave me this time? All of a sudden, Long Chen woke up, only to be greeted by an intense brightness that rendered him unable to pry his eyes open. As his vision gradually cleared, he was disappointed to not see his parents, but Jiang Huixin and Zhu Langsen. So the bright light in his dream came from the opening of the little black room, its intense light illuminating his face. Ultimately, dreams were nothing more than illusions, destined to be shattered as one inevitably woke from their slumber. In Reed, Com Chapter 3973, the Imperial family's cultivation grounds when the gates opened one by one, the bright light illuminated Long Chen's tears. At this moment, he was no longer the dean of the High Firmament Academy or an unrivaled heavenly genius, but just a helpless child. The thirst in his eyes and that helpless expression stabbed deep into the two women's hearts. When Long Chen realized who it was in front of him, that expression of loss made their hearts ache. 
Sorry for being rude. Junior Long Chen greets Ants. After a moment, Long Chen rose and bowed to the two of them. Child, can you tell me who your father and mother are? asked Jiang Huixin softly. Long Chen's expression just now had left a deep impression on her, triggering Jiang Huixin's maternal instincts. She truly wished to help Long Chen. Long Chen smiled. In truth, there's nothing to say about it. I don't even know what they look like. But I accept your kind intentions. Although he had felt lost upon awakening, he quickly adjusted himself. After his heart devil was suppressed, he felt relaxed and full of confidence for the future. He knew that his mother was definitely still alive. Yuo Zichuan refused to tell him, but he had to have his reasons. As for his father, he had heard of him from Long Aoshin and knew that he was alive. They would definitely see each other again. Seeing that Long Chen refused to say, a kind flicker appeared in Jiang Huixin's eyes. She knew that Long Chen was no ordinary child. He had to be under all kinds of pressure, but he just didn't speak of them. All right, the ten days are over. Big sister Huixin and I came here because we were worried that you would be on the verge of collapse. But it seems that the worry was for nothing, said Zhu Langsen. Long Chen seemed in top condition, so they couldn't help being curious. Had the little black room really stopped working? After Long Chen bid them farewell and left, he stretched lazily in the warm sunlight. He felt full of power. He didn't remember the last time he had ever felt so good. Big brother. Just then, he saw Zhu Yifen and Yu Kai Su walking over. Zhu Yifen cried out excitedly. Big brother, are you all right? Why wouldn't I be? I just slept in the room. I feel great. Let's go, I'll treat you to more fish. Long Chen laughed. However, Zhu Yifen shivered when Long Chen mentioned fish. He was traumatized by the word after the last incident. Yu Kaiang Su examined Long Chen. Seeing that he was in amazing condition, even better than when he had entered the little black room, she was unable to understand. Had the higher-ups given him special treatment? Let's go back to the mansion first, said Yu Kaiang Su. Long Chen smiled. You had me watch the gate to the medicinal field, and then you sent me to the fishing grounds to raise fish. Now what are you going to get me to do? Perhaps you want me to feed some spirit beasts. Keep dreaming. If you keep going like this, I'm going to lose all my money, roared Yu Kaiang Su furiously. Only after roaring furiously did she take note that this wasn't the place to shout. She hastily ran off with Long Chen and Zhu Yifen. The little black room is still functioning normally. Every rune is intact, and the core of the star field is also operating normally. Such a thing should never have occurred, unless Long Chen is originally a life form from hell. Within the palace, Zhu Langsen was still unable to figure out how Long Chen had done this. Jiang Huixin and Yu Zioyan were equally puzzled. This brat has too many secrets. I don't like him. I don't want my daughter to be with someone like this, said Yu Zioyan. But I really do like this child. Jiang Huixin smiled. Why? Yu Zioyan couldn't help but feel angry. Because Long Chen is more mature than you, and he knows how to share happiness with others. Have you not noticed that King Shuin is much happier after he appeared? Asked Jiang Huixin. What maturity? He doesn't even know the slightest thing about politeness, and his temper is terrible. King Shuin will definitely suffer if she stays with him, snorted Yu Zioan. I don't think so. Although Long Chen's temper is bad, it also depends on who he's talking to. His temper toward us has been very good, and he's fully devoted to Yu Kingshuan. He's not like someone who can't even tell enemies and allies apart when his temper explodes, said Zhu Lankson subtly. You too. Have you really been bought with two jugs of wine? Yu Zioan was furious. 
From the start, these two had been helping Long Chen, making him feel very uncomfortable. Jiang Huixin glared at him. Sister Langson is just joking. This temper of yours is just like when you were young. It hasn't improved at all. I like that child Long Chen not because King Shuan spoke up for him, or because of his talent, illustrious background, or even his wife. It is because that child Long Chen is full of love for this world. From his eyes I can see a heart-aching pain. However, he is still full of light. Even if this world hurts him countless times, he still loves this world. This is something that we weren't able to achieve in our youth. We were even rebellious and arrogant, despising this world for the pain it gave us. Although we might refuse to admit it, we've also gone through the black room's torture. We might be able to lie to others, but we can't lie to ourselves. For Long Chen, to be able to fall asleep peacefully in the black room is proof that his inner heart is still pure. He is not afraid of his negative emotions. The only reason he could sleep inside is because of his heart devil. Who knows what he did during that time? Quibbled Yu Zioyan. No matter what you say, Long Chen is much stronger than we were back then. You can't judge a person solely with your personal feelings. That would be too biased, said Jiang Huixin. But I just don't like that brat. It's like that brat was an enemy from my past life. Yu Zioyan shook his head. Of course, he was your enemy. Why else would he come to take away your treasured daughter? Laughed Zhu Langson. Zioyan, there's not that much time left. Let everyone relax and be happy for a bit. Jiang Huixin suddenly sighed sadly. When she said this, Yu Zioyan and Zhu Langson fell silent. All three of them had a touch of sorrow on their faces. Long Chen, why are you suddenly interested in the Imperial family's cultivation grounds? I thought that you were going to keep evading my challenge. Didn't you want to avoid revealing your power? Yu Kaingsu looked at Long Chen curiously as she brought them to an extravagant outdoor cultivation ground. This cultivation ground was a place only princes, princesses, and those with special status plates could enter. It was the highest level cultivation ground in the empire. Even princes and princesses had to pay money to enter this place. However, they then could enjoy the most accurate tests and greatest trials by fire. I heard that you have special instruments to test someone's power. I want to try it. Long Chen smiled. He was looking to see how far he was from the dragon expert's requirement. Oh, isn't this Long Chen? the fraud lusting after the swan's flesh. Just then, an arrogant voice full of provocation rang out. In read, com chapter 3974 smashed into a meat patty following that voice, a group of large, muscular experts in extravagant robes walked in. It's the crown prince's people. They are intentionally causing trouble, but it's not convenient for me to teach them a lesson in this place. However, you don't need to have so many misgivings. As long as you are strong enough, you can do whatever you want with them. There's no need to give them face, whispered Yu Kaingsu in Long Chen's ear. Over ten experts approached with confident strides. Their leader was a full head taller than Long Chen, and his arms rivaled the thickness of a person's thighs. But what was even more amazing was his blood kai that was surging under his skin like serpents. When those experts stopped in front of Long Chen, the leader stared at Long Chen provokingly. He was a powerful double supreme, and his blood kai was like a raging fire, suffocating others. With a disdainful smile, he said, Someone like you wants to marry a princess. Maybe you should take a piss and look at your reflection first. You think you're qualified. Long Chen smiled and looked from this large man to the others. Shaking his head, he indifferently said, My mood is good today, and I don't want other people to ruin it. Also, my temper isn't very good, so I would advise you to hurry up and scram. 
you can just be good people. Is being a dog so interesting? If Zhu Yunwen doesn't accept me, he can come at me directly. What is the point of sending a few scapegoats? Long Chen knew that the crown prince nursed a grudge against him after they had almost fought that day. Thus, his subordinates would naturally target him. One of them pointed at Long Chen and cursed, Brat, you should watch your language, or else before he could finish his sentence, Long Chen swiftly grabbed his wrist, exerting a tremendous force that resulted in the violent tearing of the entire arm. Blood then sprayed in all directions as the individual let out a harrowing scream. It happened all too quickly for anyone to react. Now, that person's dismembered arm was in Long Chen's grasp. Courting death, their leader furiously smashed a fist at Long Chen. However, the confined space limited his ability to gather power, resulting in an attack solely relying on his physical strength. Despite this limitation, this fist unleashed a wild tempest. To their surprise, his large fist was caught by Long Chen's hand, which was akin to a dragon claw digging into his fist, making him feel pain. Without hesitation, this expert sent a kick at Long Chen's armpit to make him let go. However, he had just raised his foot when Long Chen directly lifted him up. After that, in front of everyone's stunned gaze, a large man was ruthlessly slammed into the ground. Both, as he was solidly smashed into the ground, the brick's runes lit up, forming a powerful defensive formation that protected the ground from any damage. On the other hand, that large man hacked up blood, his teeth letting out a crunching sound. Who said that you could have such a dirty mouth? roared Long Chen. Long Chen raised the large man into the air, using him like a sandbag and smashing him into the ground repeatedly. Seeing this scene, Yu Kaing Su and Zhu Yifen were dumbfounded. Long Chen's attack had come so abruptly that they were unable to react in time. Moreover, they couldn't even tell what technique he was using as it was completely different from the fighting style that they were used to. How could Long Chen achieve this? It had to be known that this large man was one of the powerful subordinates of the crown prince. Even Yu Kaing Su would need at least ten moves to defeat him. However, in front of Long Chen, he was unable to exchange even half a move before being caught. The first three times he was smashed into the ground, he still had the power to fight back. But by the fourth time, he was already unconscious. By the fifth time, he had no spiritual kai left to protect his body, which caused his bones to shatter. The pain then woke him up, and he was smashed into the ground again, knocking him unconscious once more. In the end, Long Chen smashed him into the ground eighteen times. Eventually, he sensed the weight in his hand lighten. When he raised his gaze, he discovered that all that remained in his grasp was a thick arm. The force of Long Chen's strikes had propelled the large man's body through the air, sending him hurtling and crashing into a nearby wall. Upon impact, the man's body went limp, resembling a lifeless mass of mud. He just lay there motionless, his fate hanging in the balance, as the extent of his injuries and his state of being whether alive or dead remained uncertain. Long Chen was now holding two severed arms, overflowing with icy, killing intent. Just by looking at his ominous appearance, the people in the vicinity quivered endlessly. Sorry, it's definitely my heart devil causing trouble again. I must stay calm. Long Chen tossed aside the arms and put on a regretful appearance. Bullshit. Just then, Long Chen heard a spiritual roar from the bronze cauldron. His heart devil was enraged. It was Long Chen himself being violent, yet he blamed his heart devil while the latter was unable to even leave the bronze cauldron. Thus, he cursed Long Chen's shamelessness. Long Chen pretended not to hear and shrugged. I already told you that my temper isn't good. It's your own fault for not listening. Long Chen's temper came and left quickly. Just now, he had seemed like he was about to murder them all, 
and now he seemed fine, as if nothing had happened. These sudden turns left Yu Kaiyang Su and Zhu Yifeng flabbergasted. You, you, you snake attacker. How shameful! One of them roared at Long Chen's indifference. As a result, a hand suddenly struck his face, causing half of his face to collapse. He was then smashed into that meat patty of a large man who was stuck on the wall. Ah! Uh, as a result, that person fainted, but the large man woke up from the pain. His body was a shattered mess, with every bone broken and his blood kai in complete disarray. As a result, agonizing waves surged through him, causing him to writhe and convulse as if countless startled rabbits were stampeding over his injuries. The excruciating torment became unbearable, pushing him to the brink of wishing for a swift death. Cough my apologies. I tend to be a bit heavy-handed. Next time, I'll be more careful. Also, I should advise you to keep your voices down so I'm not startled. It's rude to point at people. Also, take note of your tone and attitude when speaking. In fact, it would be best if you just didn't speak to me. After all, life is very precious. A person's life is already short, and there's no point in taking shortcuts. Long Chen was now smiling brightly, but that was even more terrifying than his previous appearance. He was like a phantom when he attacked, and they were unable to defend against him. Those people all retreated in terror. It was only once they were far away enough that they felt safe. They then quickly pulled off the meat patty man and the other one before slinking away. But just as they were about to leave Long Chen's line of sight, one of them pointed at Long Chen and cursed. Just you wait. That person didn't even finish speaking before a flash of lightning pierced his mouth. In read, come chapter 3975, Dragon Power Test. Seeing how you're holding out your butt, I can tell that you must need to spit out a few balls of dumb. You want to play this game with me? Keep talking and I'll feed that dung back to you. Long Chen had long since noted that this fellow was not obedient, so he had already prepared a lightning sword just for him. As a result, this lightning sword pierced this fellow's mouth, shattering his jaw. He was fried black by the lightning and passed out. Now, those people didn't even dare to make a sound, only adding this charred person to the people that they were dragging away. They came tyrannically and left wretchedly. I don't understand. Are you all children? Why do you play such low-grade provocation games? Who has so much free time? Why not cultivate? Wasting precious time on such things. You must truly be blessed. Long Chen looked at Yu Kaiyang Su helplessly. Barely recovered after seeing Long Chen's ruthless means, she snorted. Don't act so wise like you're more mature. This is a world with constant fighting. Which place doesn't have this kind of infighting? That's how you show your value, through constant competition. How else do you know if you are outstanding or inferior? Life is a stage, and if you don't know how to show off your power, you can only live an ordinary life. An ordinary life. Long Chen bitterly smiled. I wish I could live an ordinary life. If you were a member of the imperial family, you would have been banished a long time ago for lacking any ambition. As an imperial disciple, an heir to the Jeyali bloodline, and a follower of the Vermilion Bird, you cannot say such a worthless thing. The imperial disciples have to work hard in order to protect the throne and the people, said Yu Kaiyangsu. The logic's not bad, but such childish competition cannot create true experts. Greenhouse flowers might look nice, but a single frost will wipe them all out, said Long Chen disdainfully. What nonsense! Are you looking down on my imperial family? demanded Yu Kaiyangsu. You can treat it as such. I can't be bothered to explain it to you since none of you would understand. I'll tell you the truth. As a person, you aren't terrible. In fact, I can just barely count you as a friend. 
but I don't want you to use me. I have no interest in being drawn into the fight between the princes and princesses. One mistake and your imperial family's blood will flow like a river. My current goal is only to marry King Shuin. I don't want to get sucked into your affairs in case I can't hold myself back, said Long Chen sincerely. If this continued, when his temper erupted, he would slaughter a few princes and princesses, and then there would be no way to propose. He would be the enemy of the imperial family. Long Chen actually wanted to avoid standing out in the Vermilion Bird Empire. He just wanted a few days of peace where he didn't have to constantly fight and kill. But, based on the current trend, he was going to be drawn into a fight again. Your words are very arrogant. You think you can make the blood of the imperial blood flow like a river? Ah, uh, you Kayanxu sneered. Long Chen looked at her and also laughed, not saying anything else. Sometimes naivety was also a kind of power. He wished he could be naive, but he didn't have that chance. Yu Kainxu then brought Long Chen down a long passageway. On the way, they saw quite a few imperial disciples. They all stared at him, clearly having heard of him. However, their gazes were mostly icy or contemptuous, even hostile. There weren't many friendly faces here. It was because the imperial disciples were split into factions and branches. These disciples had all chosen their own sides, picking the prince or princess that they supported. In truth, this could be considered another trial for these disciples, a test of their judgment. Considering Yu Kaiyangsu's aloofness and lack of skill in winning people over, other than herself possessing immense power, she had no other strong points. Thus, other than some guards and aides, she didn't have the support of any imperial disciples. In this area, she was even worse than Zhu Yifeng, who had two imperial disciples willing to support him. In fact, they were very close to him. As for Yu Kaiyang Su, she had no one. Long Chen, Zhu Yifeng, and Yu Kaiyang Su arrived at a gate and saw more people in charge of inspecting status plates here. They even made a record of Long Chen and the others before opening the gate. The next moment, a shockingly ancient aura came out of the gate. This was a giant plaza with all kinds of equipment inside. As a place for testing the strength of the physical body and training one's power, there were various pieces of equipment here with dragon marks carved into them. They gave off a heavy feeling. These were all incredibly old items. This is the Vermilion Bird Empire's special dragon power testing grounds, and only cultivators with the strongest physical bodies train here. Also, the units of weight here are measured in dragon power. A single dragon power is the full power of a dragon king or 300,000 jun. One jun is 300,000 shi and one shi is 300,000 catties. The catty here is equivalent to the mortal world's caddy. As an ascender from the mortal world, you should have a general understanding of it, right? Explained Yu Kainksu. A general understanding? Are you asking me how many caddies a dragon force is? Long Chen rolled his eyes. Probably Xia Chen and Guo Ran would be able to instantly calculate it, but he couldn't be bothered. The immortal world's weights were mostly counted with Xi, and the Xi standard was based on the amethyst granite. It had high density, was easy to cut, and was very common. It was a material that could be found almost everywhere within the nine heavens and ten lands. One square foot of amethyst granite was 300,000 caddies. So, in the immortal world, one Xi was 300,000 caddies. But on the other hand, in the mortal world, one jun was 300,000 caddies. The measurement units had changed. A single dragon force was equal to 300,000 of the immortal world's juns. It would be impossible to count just how many of the immortal world's caddies that would be. When Long Chen and the others arrived, there were hundreds of experts training here. All of them were large, 
physically strong cultivators. In particular, they saw one practicing the horse stance with a short rod. However, veins were throbbing on his forehead. It seemed that whatever that rod was, it was incredibly heavy. Big brother, those rods have the weight of a single dragon power. It is the lightest weight here. For him to be able to hold the horse stance for several breaths is already very impressive. I can't do that. At best, I can hold it for a single breath, any more, and my body wouldn't be able to endure it. The strain of holding it would tear apart my meridians. For him to be able to last this long, his maximum lift is probably around three dragon powers. His physical body can be counted as extremely powerful, said Zhu Yifeng. Long Chen asked Yu Kaingsu, what is your maximum? Yu Kaingsu indifferently said, the imperial family doesn't focus on the physical body, so I have only reached ten dragon powers. I look forward to seeing how many dragon powers you can lift. Although her tone was flat, anyone could hear her pride. Perhaps in the entire Vermilion Bird Empire, the number of women possessing ten dragon powers could be counted on one hand. Big brother, you haven't tested it before, so just try one dragon power first. It's frighteningly heavy. You can easily get injured if you aren't careful. Ju Yifen kindly advised Long Chen, feeling worried that for his own pride, Long Chen would directly challenge ten dragon powers. If he was injured from the attempt, it would be embarrassing. Hence, he gave Long Chen a step down from that. Hearing this, Long Chen patted his shoulder. This child really wasn't bad. To be able to still possess a kind heart while growing up in such an emotionless environment was truly rare in Reed. Calm Long Chen then looked at that rod with a hint of anticipation in his eyes. After so many years, he finally had a chance to test his power. He slowly reached out his hand. In Reed, Com Chapter 3976, the difference is too great when Long Chen's hand wrapped around one of those rods. Zhu Yifen and Yu Kaiyangsu held their breath in anticipation. Long Chen hadn't focused his power. That attitude was like he was just picking up an egg. The surrounding experts also paused to stare at him, but most of them had mocking sneers. They waited to see him embarrass himself. This was a common sight here. Many people thought that they were powerful and overestimated themselves here. During their first time, most of them would embarrass themselves. Many of them would even cough up blood from misjudging the necessary power required. After that, the rod quivered slightly and Long Chen's expression changed. Ah! When they saw his expression change, those experts all laughed. He doesn't know how high the heavens are. There really are many ignorant people nowadays. He he, only the ignorant are fearless. However, just as the mocking voices rang out, they came to a sudden stop. The disdainful expressions became one of confusion and then shock. That terrifyingly heavy rod was easily picked up by Long Chen. Even Yu Kaiyangsu was covering her mouth in shock, while Zhu Yifeng's eyes almost popped out. Moreover, Long Chen didn't just pick up the rod. He rolled it around in his hand, which almost drove these experts crazy. They didn't dare to believe their eyes. A single rod is this heavy? Not good. Long Chen appraised the weight without a hint of joy on his face. He looked solemn. The dragon expert's voice rang out in Long Chen's mind. A so-called dragon power is only the most basic power of a matured dragon king. You know, a sacred dragon possesses 10,000 dragon power after becoming a dragon king. As for you, well, I won't say it. Just remember, if you want to change your seven-star battle armor, you'll need at least 3,000 dragon power. Only once your physical body reaches that power level can you endure the impact of changing the seven-star battle armor. Of course, 3,000 dragon power is only the lowest base. If you want to lower the risk, you should make your physical body as powerful as possible. 
3,000 dragon power is only the minimum. If you cannot reach that level, you cannot try it, or you really will lose your life. 10,000 dragon power. Long Chen almost dropped the rod in his hand. A sacred dragon was actually such a terrifyingly powerful existence. Hearts thundered in the room, but the rapid beats didn't belong to Long Chen. Instead, they resonated within the chests of everyone else present. Big brother, big brother. Seeing Long Chen lost in thought as he weighed the rod in his hand, Zhu Yifeng finally called out to him. Only then did Long Chen recover his wits. At this moment, he saw that everyone was completely dumbstruck. Long Chen said, It seems that I overestimated myself. This rod is one dragon power. I'm probably a far cry from the requirement. Long Chen looked at the rod and sighed. Its weight was truly a blow to him. Big brother. No, boss. Is it really not difficult for you to hold it? Or is there a problem with the rod? Let me try it, Ayo. In read, come boom. The rod smashed into the ground. As a result, the earth cracked and the training grounds swayed. There was no issue with the rod. Big brother, I asked to try it, not for you to throw it at me. Ju Yifen was green with fright. Long Chen had casually tossed the rod to him, but he didn't dare to catch it. Sorry, I didn't do it on purpose. Long Chen reached his hand into the ground and pulled out the rod, returning it to its original location. Yu Kaiengsu had reached out to press a button that would activate a formation. With it, the rod would be automatically brought back to its original location. It had to be known that such mistakes were common here. People often dropped these rods. Fortunately, the formation would automatically repair the ground and send the rods back. It was because there was almost no way to pull these rods out of the ground due to the lack of grip. Hence, for Long Chen to forcibly pull it just like that was truly shocking. People stare at Long Chen like he was a monster, and they were filled with shock and amazement. Their previous disdain had long since vanished. After all, experts always received people's reverence wherever they went. They surrounded him, staring at him reverently. Senior apprentice brother, you're so powerful. Why not challenge yourself and see what your limit is? We can help you find the weights, suggested someone. Long Chen was so powerful that a single dragon power was nothing to him. Hence, they were all interested to know his limit. The next moment, Long Chen looked at the longest rod. It was only one foot above the ground and had to be lifted with brute power. Rise! Long Chen grabbed it, and in front of countless shocked gazes, he lifted it from its spot. A hundred dragon power! Heavens, what am I seeing? All the experts were fully dumbfounded now. They couldn't believe what they were seeing. Double it. Double it. Add another hundred. Boop. The training grounds shook as rods covered in dragon marks fell to the ground. This time, Long Chen was covered in sweat and gasping for breath. He could no longer pull them out of the ground. Five hundred. Thirty-seven dragon power. The experts present were stunned. Long Chen's limit was 537 dragon power. It had to be known that, in the Immortal King realm, the highest record in history was 287 dragon power. Furthermore, that was a record accomplished by someone at the peak of the Immortal King realm. As for Long Chen, he was only in the initial Immortal King realm. However, he had broken the record and almost doubled it. Was he really human? No, even a beast race couldn't possess such power right. Actually, the record of 287 dragon power was completed by an expert from a beast race. As for the record for a human expert, it was 93 everyone stared at Long Chen, who was staring at those rods gloomily. 537. That was a far cry from 3,000. Was he really so weak? After he had absorbed the ancestral dragon essence blood, his power allowed him to look down on all others in the same realm. 
even Kun too was defeated by him. Despite that, he remained far from meeting the minimum criteria set by the dragon expert, let alone matching the awe-inspiring prowess of a sacred dragon. It was truly a blow to him. Don't be dejected. You aren't from the dragon race, so it's normal for my dragon blood to not raise your power that much. I actually thought that your foundation would put you at 300 dragon power, but it seems that I underestimated you. The dragon expert once more spoke to him. Surprisingly, there was a hint of gratification in its voice. Senior, are you just trying to comfort me? Long Chen smiled bitterly. He felt like he had wasted this transcendent blood. My dragon race doesn't know how to comfort the weak. Long Chen, since your foundation is so strong, I have a new idea. Do you wish to gamble? Upon hearing this, Long Chen's heart pounded wildly. He smelled the hint of something good. In read, com chapter 3977, Dragon Soul Body Forging Art Senior. Tell me what the good news is. Long Chen was delighted. It seemed that something good was about to fall into his lap. Well, it's not necessarily a good thing, so whether it's a blessing or disaster is still uncertain. But since my dragon blood has perfectly merged with your body, your body has undoubtedly surpassed the limits of your human race. Furthermore, through your display just now, I find that the dragon essence blood has changed and become a new seed blooming with new life in your body. Perhaps, and I say perhaps, as it is just a possibility you could cause this dragon blood to undergo a second awakening. Then, the power of your physical body would reach an unprecedented level. It might even surpass mine from back then. The dragon expert cautiously threw out this possibility, as it had no assurance when it came to this. Surpass you? Surpass ten thousand dragon powers? Is that even possible? Long Chen's voice quivered. I cannot give you any assurance. All I can say is that the possibility is there. However, it is risky. If you wish to take this path, there's no going back. If you succeed in this, though, it might even be more important than cultivating the nine-star hegemon body art. But then, whichever path you choose, it is still shrouded in darkness. You need to trailblaze a new path. In other words, if you want to try it, you not only need to think about your unknown path with the nine-star hegemon body art, but you will also need to add another path that is just as difficult. It will bring an even greater difficulty to your future, said the dragon expert. Senior, can you tell me what your suggestion is first? Asked Long Chen. I once created my own body tempering art. This technique was my strongest cultivation technique that allowed me to look down disdainfully on generation after generation of ancestral dragons. But for some reason, when I transmitted it to my descendants, they were unable to inherit it. In the end, the dragon expert sighed. In the end what? Asked Long Chen hastily. None of my descendants were even able to gain an initial mastery over it before their bodies exploded in the process. Also, my bloodline has existed for countless years, so I have witnessed millions of my descendants that were blessed with immense talent dying to this cultivation technique. In the end, I stopped transmitting this technique. In the past ten million years, I have been pondering whether this technique was so powerful that the heavens were jealous of it, so they made it so that other than me, no one else could inherit it. But seeing your potential today and your mutated dragon blood, my heart is stirring again. Even so, this is a very dangerous gamble. Very, very dangerous. I don't know if it will harm you. Perhaps you will also die just like all the others. The dragon expert's voice was full of complicated emotions. That weary tone was exceptionally difficult for outsiders to comprehend. As a peak expert, it possessed its own peak divine abilities, but it was unable to pass down its unmatched cultivation technique. It was a kind of silent pain. 
It had helped Long Chen multiple times now, from guiding him through crisis, to bestowing upon him the divine abilities of the dragon race, and even imparting him with its essence blood. In truth, to a certain extent, Long Chen could be considered its heir. However, this was a technique that could bring about Long Chen's demise. Countless heavenly geniuses of the dragon race had died in their attempts to master this technique. Hee hee, senior, don't worry. When it comes to me, I am always in an emergency and need to deal with something. As for the future, I'll think about it when the time comes. Just transmit that technique to me. We'll see if it's doable. Isn't just trying it all right? Long Chen's disease flared up once more. Whether it was a miraculous treasure or a powerful cultivation technique, he had a fatal attraction to all of them. Moreover, with how cautious the dragon expert was being, Long Chen was completely unable to hold himself back. This was definitely a heaven-shaking cultivation technique. This cultivation technique is a modified version of the dragon blood body tempering art, known as the dragon soul body forging art. While the underlying principles remain similar, the dragon soul body forging art encompasses not only essence blood as its foundation, but also integrates the spirit, soul, will, mind, blood, kai, and bones into it. Thus, its overall requirements are higher. One is like a constant tempering to increase your power, while the other requires all your seven foundations to be equal. They are linked by a profound connection that cannot be described with words or diagrams. It is extremely mysterious. All my descendants who cultivated the dragon soul body forging art died, so I wondered whether it was because my teaching was bad or if they simply didn't learn it right. Later on, I understood that it was both. I wanted to pass down this technique, so when I explained it, I went into great detail, repeatedly explaining so that they would remember every little bit. But later on, I understood that it had the opposite effect. Under the principle that the Grand Tao is simple, the more complex you make it and the more detailed you go, the more muddled it becomes. As a result, all the descendants who cultivated my dragon soul body forging art were unable to escape the intrinsic thinking and cultivation style of the dragon race. As for my technique, it may appear similar to the dragon race's divine abilities on the surface, but in the end it is not the same. However, when it comes to how it is different, even after thinking about it for countless years, I was unable to figure it out. The most laughable thing is that I am the creator of this technique, but I only know the what, not the why, said the dragon expert. To have created a world-class divine technique yet not understand it was definitely a very comical thing. The Grand Tao is formless, giving birth to heaven and earth. The Grand Tao is emotionless, moving the sun and moon. The Grand Tao is nameless, nourishing all life. No one can possibly explain the mysteries of the cosmos. Our human race likes to use the word Tao to encapsulate all things and their workings within this world, but we cannot clearly explain what this word Tao means. The grand Tao cannot be put to pen and paper. It is limitless, without borders. Some parts of the Tao appear to be one thing but are actually another. In the end, one can only use one's own experience to judge what is right and what is wrong, said Long Chen Yinri, come the dragon expert said, what you're saying is very reasonable. Although you haven't reached that realm, you are very close to it when you speak. As for perception and comprehension, it is your human race that stands at the peak. Even my dragon race cannot compare to you guys. Thus, after pondering it, I am willing to transmit this technique to you. If you are really able to learn it and transmit it to future generations, then I can already rest in peace. The dragon expert's voice became a bit emotional toward the end. It seemed that it felt even greater excitement and anticipation than Long Chen. This cultivation technique has no mnemonic, so I can only teach you its energy circulation method. After that, 
the dragon expert transmitted an energy circulation method for the spirit, soul, will, mind, blood, chi, and bones. However, even with Long Chen's comprehension powers, he was dumbfounded, as he was completely unable to understand what this was. Could it even be called a cultivation technique? It doesn't matter if you understand it or not. You should study it yourself. The more I teach you, the more narrow your path grows. I don't want to repeat my old mistakes, said the dragon expert. Long Chen was dumbfounded. All he had been given was an outline, and it was also incredibly general. He didn't even know what the principles behind it were. Weight, seven-star battle armor? Seven kinds of energy? Couldn't I? Long Chen suddenly jumped, feeling like he had just seen an unprecedented world before him. It was akin to countless bolts of lightning flashing through his mind. The door to the unknown slowly opened before him. Inri, Com Chapter 3978, A New Direction What? 537 Dragon Power. Are you sure that this information is accurate? Yu Ziyuan stared at his two empresses in shock. There is no mistake. Yu Ziyuan, you are naturally gifted and even possess the vermilion bird divine radiance. I remember that where you were in the immortal king realm, your secret record was only 327. Who would have thought that the seemingly scholarly Long Chen would actually possess such terrifying power? Said Zhu Langson. There's no way. Even if he has true dragon essence blood in his veins, his body is still that of a human. How can he possess such power? Yu Ziyuan couldn't believe it. Even as a child, Yu Ziyuan had been exceptionally gifted and possessed shocking power. However, his power was a secret of the Vermilion Bird Empire. So, other than himself, only his empresses were aware of the full extent of his power. Back then, the Vermilion Bird Divine Radiance appeared when Yu Ziyuan was born, causing the Vermilion Bird's runes to form on his body. Due to this, he was said to be the rebirth of the Vermilion Bird's son. Therefore, his physical body was terrifyingly powerful. But as the secret weapon of the Vermilion Bird Empire, his power was a secret to the people. However, Long Chen's power had even exceeded Yu Ziyuan's younger days, causing Yu Ziyuan to not dare to believe it. He had never encountered someone whose power exceeded his in his lifetime. Moreover, Long Chen had even surpassed him by a full 110 dragon power. It was unbelievable. The High Firmament Academy's youngest dean throughout all of history. Perhaps he is even stronger than we imagine. This child truly knows how to hide his power, said Jiang Huixin with a smile. She felt very curious about Long Chen. HMPH, even if his power surpasses mine from back then, so what? Strength isn't my greatest talent, scoffed Yu Ziyuan unhappily when he heard their praise toward Long Chen. Seeing his angry expression, the two empresses exchanged a look and laughed. 537 dragon power. Impossible. That's pure nonsense. Princess Kaiyang Su must be intentionally spreading a rumor about him. In the immortal king realm, let alone a human, not even the dragon race would possess such power. The news that Long Chen had 537 dragon power was spreading like wildfire. As he had broken the record in the immortal king realm, all the cultivators in the empire soon heard of it. When they heard it, their first reaction was to think that it was a lie, that the result was definitely an equipment failure or formation malfunction. As countless people sent runners to verify this report, Long Chen was already in Yu Kaingsu's mansion, accompanied by Zhu Yifen. After all, the latter was now full of worship for Long Chen and refused to leave his side. He even left his own home and stayed at the prince's mansion, acting like Long Chen's aide. This time, Yu Kaiyang Su's guards treated him with the utmost respect. No one even dared to display the slightest disrespect to him. 
thinking of the dragon expert's dragon soul body forging art, Long Chen directly went into seclusion. This cultivation technique is too general. The dragon senior must have used the principles from the start of its cultivation to create it. But as more details are added, it's easier to make mistakes, leading people off the wrong path. The soul, spirit, will, mind, blood, chi, and bones of the first four are mental energies. Soul, spirit, and will are easy to understand, but what is this mind? If the spirit is the Yun spirit, and the soul is spiritual strength, then wouldn't the will and mind be one thing? Why are they split? Or is the will something different in the dragon race? The will is the will, and the mind is the will too. Is such an understanding right or wrong? If it is a technique of the dragon race, it must have the dragon race's power as a foundation. I only have dragon blood, so I'll have to start with it. After thinking of a general path, Long Chen entered his cultivation state. When his golden dragon blood rumbled and ignited, golden flames enveloped his body. However, even as it burned, he didn't sense anything. But when he used this dragon blood as the ignition point to ignite his spiritual kai, he directly coughed up blood. His body almost exploded. Are you a pig? How can you ignite all your spiritual kai at once? Are you trying to get yourself killed? Cursed the dragon expert. Oh, I was careless. Igniting the essence blood was very simple to Long Chen. Thus, he hadn't particularly felt that igniting his spiritual kai would be anything difficult either. As a result, he had overlooked one crucial detail. This time, it wasn't a simple matter of igniting his spiritual kai alone. It involved utilizing the power of his dragon blood to ignite his spiritual kai, an act that nearly caused his entire body to explode in the process. After his first failure, Long Chen split his spiritual kai into hundreds of portions, igniting one portion at a time. As expected, it was much simpler this time. His dragon blood and spiritual kai were now burning at the same time, letting him see golden spots appear in his originally white spiritual kai. His spiritual kai was starting to be infected with the aura of the sacred dragon. After finding this method, he progressed smoothly. In just an hour, all his spiritual kai was burning. He then removed the blockades and let this spiritual kai circulate throughout his body. When his kai and blood merged, his aura changed. His body now had a sacred light around it. Ah! Uh, suddenly, Long Chen screamed. When he tried using this kai and blood flame to ignite the bones, an agonizing sensation surged through him. It felt as if countless scalding iron brands were raining upon his bones, searing them with relentless intensity causing golden spots to appear on his white bones. The golden spots, looking like dragon-shaped runes, gradually spread over his bones. As they branded themselves on the bones, golden energy flowed into the bones. However, this process was extremely painful. Even with Long Chen's pain tolerance, his face still twisted and veins throbbed on his forehead. There's no need to be in such a rush. You can go one bone at a time, advised the dragon expert. No need. It's been a long time since I felt such pain. Why not go all out? Long Chen clenched his teeth. Boo! Long Chen's entire body shook as golden flames engulfed every single bone within his body. When millions of dragon-shaped runes branded themselves onto his bones, Long Chen let out a heaven-shaking roar exposing the golden light that came even from his teeth. Are you trying to kill yourself? The dragon expert was stunned. Let alone a human, even the heavenly geniuses of the dragon race would feel enough pain to want to die when forging their bones. At this moment, Long Chen's scarlet eyes almost popped out of their sockets, and his entire body convulsed with tremors, unable to withstand the overwhelming power surging through him. A primal, guttural roar emanated from deep within his throat, 
yet no intelligible words escaped his lips in reed calm however he didn't give up he directly used this explosive method to cover his entire skeleton with runes after an arduous two-hour ordeal long chen's body finally ceased its incessant twitching beads of sweat drenched the ground beneath him evidence of the immense exertion he had undergone moreover his vibrant countenance now appeared pallid and drained devoid of its usual vitality after resting a bit long chen activated his inner sense and saw that all his bones had become golden with countless runes on them they were like veins flowing through his bones he he i have a body of steel now long chen sensed the strength of his bones and couldn't help crying out excitedly he felt like his current bones supported by these runes were even stronger than world domain divine items i understand i understand the dragon expert also cried out emotionally with a quivering voice in read com chapter three thousand nine hundred seventy nine black robes for a banquet senior what do you understand asked long chen long chen why did you have to be so suicidal asked the dragon expert excitedly this doesn't count as suicidal right right now i should be in the simplest easiest part of the dragon soul body forging art based on my calculations first i'll forge the blood then the kai and then the bones after that i'll temper the will soul spirit and finally the mind don't ask me why i'm doing it in this order because i don't know either in any case i feel that starting shallow and then going deeper is best this is starting with the easiest before moving on to the harder part i want to complete the bone forging in one go as preparation for the pain of forging the soul otherwise if my will isn't strong enough i'll probably be crippled answered long chen could it be that this is the will of the heavens long chen do you know the bone forging that you just went through created the divine bone meridians that is precisely the crux of cultivating the dragon's soul body forging art when i taught my descendants this technique not one of them managed to form these meridians that is why they were unable to undergo a full circulation of the power in their bodies which caused the backflow to crush them it's only when your bone meridians appeared that i understood this step must be done throughout all the bones at once otherwise they won't be fully linked aya how could i be such a fool as to not realize this so many outstanding children died for nothing the dragon expert blamed itself for this long chen had only condensed the divine bone meridians accidentally after all these meridians were akin to a giant tree all the branches leaves roots and trunk had to be completed at once however the dragon expert had been unaware of this despite being the one to create this technique the pain of this bone forging was so immense that others couldn't endure it all at once so they had forged every bone separately once the bones were all forged they would be like countless puzzle pieces put together although they seemed to fit perfectly on the surface in truth they were not actually connected such a thing would not produce meridians even if meridians did form they would be fake and not linked thus when their power circulated through the meridians it led to a complete collapse on the other hand long chen's natural meridians were the result of forging all his bones at once so there were natural passageways between the bones also with him forging them like this all his power was spread evenly throughout the bones because of these natural passageways creating perfect meridians the dragon expert cursed itself when it saw this long chen himself had just been blindly doing as he pleased in fact he wasn't even sure what the dragon expert was saying but it seemed that the step that he had randomly chosen was correct does this mean that my path is correct asked long chen it is it is most definitely correct this problem that i was unable to figure out after tens of millions of years was just inadvertently solved by you 
with this everything else will be no problem however you do need to rest stabilize your current power first don't greedily push yourself too far and don't do something so stupid again just once is enough warned the dragon expert he he all right it seemed that the dragon expert would be guiding long chen properly for everything afterward since there was no need for long chen to randomly guess he felt much more relaxed about mastering this technique now other than the golden dragon blood long chen also possessed golden bones and golden spiritual kai when the three merged together they brought him endless power and long chen could clearly sense that his power had gone up a level after resting for a few hours he was fully recovered he then walked out of the cultivation room and saw zhu yifink and yu kaiengsu waiting for him you finally come out any later and i'd have to knock and summon you said yu kaiengsu what is it asked long chen there is a state banquet happening soon and his majesty has requested your attendance hurry up and change your clothes you can come with us said yu kaiink su after that she handed over a set of robes to long chen these robes were in the standard style of the princes long chen was startled was he being given the status of a prince did his stubborn father-in-law have a change of heart was that a bit sudden I don't need to change clothes. I'd only like wearing these black robes. Long Chen shook his head as he didn't like wearing other colors. Also, he preferred the clothes that his women had made for him. Ah, that's not a good idea. The imperial family cares a great deal about etiquette. On this kind of occasion, your clothes. Yu Kaiink Su frowned. Long Chen's current clothes might be made of decent material, but they were already a bit worn down. It clearly wasn't suited to a state banquet. If I have to change clothes, I just won't go. Help me thank His Majesty for the invitation, said Long Chen. Yun. Yu Kaiink Su was speechless. Inviting an outsider like Long Chen to a state banquet was a huge favor, but Long Chen was refusing to attend just because of some clothes. If you refuse to wear them, then fine. Let's just go. But if you aren't allowed entrance at the gate, don't blame me, said Yu Kaingsu. Big brother, just change. Let me tell you, one time all I did was put a buckler with the design backward, and I was scolded heavily by those dislikable fellows. They'll probably make things hard on you if you wear this, pleaded Ju Yifen. These robes have a special meaning to me. It's fine. They won't be the first ones to make things hard on me. Let them do as they please, said Long Chen. Hearing this, Yu Kaiyang Su helplessly led the way. She felt like she was already quite stubborn, but she was far too docile compared to Long Chen. Long Chen, do you have friends? Yu Kaiyang Su couldn't help asking on the way. Of course, I have many, said Long Chen. Someone with your smelly temper has friends? Where is the justice in that? Why don't I have a single one? demanded Yu Kaiyang Su. Perhaps your temper isn't smelly enough. If you make it smellier, you'll have smelly brothers and sisters to accompany you, laughed Long Chen. Yu Kaiyang Su glared at him. Let me warn you, the state banquet has many rules. Don't randomly speak and implicate me when the time comes. More rules? Long Chen was startled, seeming to sense something. With his infamous temper, with how he didn't give face to anyone who made things hard on him, why would the emperor invite him to this state banquet? Was the emperor intentionally causing trouble for him? Would the emperor find an excuse to erase all his efforts so far? No, if that was what he wanted, it should be taken out as a final trump card. Wasn't it too early? Long Chen didn't know what the emperor was thinking. As he pondered, he was escorted by the guards and arrived at the palace gate. Stop. As soon as he arrived, a group of people blocked him. 
I think you should take a look at in read com chapter 3980 unbridled to Long Chen's surprise. The people who were blocking him looked rather familiar. One of them was that pale, pudgy Hanlon scholar that he had left in a miserable state. Today, this Hanlon scholar was wearing golden scholar robes and was fully dressed up. Even his scholar headband was perfectly square-shaped. Six Hanlon scholars were in charge of registration, handing out gifts and greeting the guests. It was because this state banquet was an important affair for the Vermilion Bird Empire, so every single detail had to be meticulously handled. The fact that Hanlon scholars were personally doing the registration spoke volumes about the state banquet's significance, highlighting both the importance placed on it and the high regard the empire held for the pursuit of higher learning. For these scholars to receive the martial cultivators was also a way to maintain decorum, a way of inspecting the people coming to attend the banquet. Oh, it seems that you're not doing too bad. I have to say, your clothes really do make you seem like a decent poser. When Long Chen saw that scholar's sinister gaze, he knew that the latter would abuse his power. But Long Chen didn't mind. Arrogance. How dare you spout obscenities before the imperial gate? Guards, take this man away, shouted one of the Hanlin scholars. Over ten warriors with golden spears immediately came over and surrounded Long Chen. Hold on. This is Long Chen, and His Majesty personally requested his attendance at this state banquet. Who dares to even touch him? said Yu Kai and Ksu coldly. Hearing this, the Pudgy Hanlin scholar was startled. He had thought that Long Chen was just Yu Kai and Ksu's guard. According to the Empire's rules, princes and princesses could bring an outstanding guard to a state banquet twice a year to show how valued they were. That was why this Hanlin scholar wanted to directly kick Long Chen out as revenge for the humiliation that he had given him. However, to his surprise, Long Chen didn't come under the status of a guard, but as the guest that the emperor had personally invited. Thus, this pudgy scholar just ended up kicking an iron plate. Long Chen didn't say anything and just looked at the pudgy Hanlin scholar with his arms crossed, as if the latter was a chattering clown, causing the Hanlin scholar's face to flush until it was the same color as pig liver. Since His Majesty has requested his attendance, hurry up, register, take the gift, and move on, said another tall Hanlin scholar coldly, clearly helping out that pudgy Hanlin scholar. Why aren't you wearing imperial robes? Just as the tall Hanlin scholar was about to register Long Chen, he eyed Long Chen. I don't feel like it, responded Long Chen. You... The tall Hamlin scholar was about to criticize Long Chen when another one grabbed him. After several glances, the tall Hamlin scholar finally swallowed his rage and registered Long Chen, giving him his entrance gift. After the three of them walked in, that tall Hamlin scholar couldn't help but demand, Brother Liang, why did you stop me? Even if His Majesty invited him with those clothes, I could definitely cause some trouble for him. We had such a good chance to vent. This fellow is too arrogant. That's right, Brother Yang, why did you let him off? Asked the pudgy Hanlin scholar. Hee hee, you think that I let him off? Just think about it. The philosopher is attending the state banquet too. When the time comes, he he, chortled that Hanlin scholar. Only then did the others understand. Nicely played. The philosopher will definitely put that arrogant bastard in his place. Ah! The six of them exchanged a look and laughed, as if they could already see Long Chen losing all his face during the state banquet. What are you laughing about in front of the imperial gate? Get back to work. An overseeing elder barked at them to maintain their decorum. Actually, Long Chen heard them talking, but he couldn't be bothered to pay them the slightest attention. Big brother, why don't you just change your clothes? That philosopher's position is extremely high. Even my imperial father can't do anything to him. 
Moreover, the philosopher's face and mouth are all sinister. You're leaving him an opening to attack you like this, advised Zhu Yifeng again. He had kept the clothes as a backup even now. No need. So what if that philosopher's face and mouth are sinister? Even my heart is sinister, so why would I be afraid of him? We'll see just who should be avoiding who. Long Chen shook his head. After suppressing his heart devil, he felt free to be himself. He no longer needed to be so cautious. After his heart devil was suppressed, Long Chen felt much more at ease, thrumming with confidence. He felt full of hope for the future, and his senses were also sharper. Thanks to this, when he cultivated the dragon soul body forging art, his intuition told him that he had to forge all his bones at once. The dragon expert even said that he had blindly taken the right path. Without his heart devil, he felt like he had returned to the time when he had just left the Phoenix Cry Empire and was traveling to a new world. The long chin from back then was so weak that he couldn't even be mentioned in front of his parent self. However, the long chin from back then had also been exceptionally confident. No dangers made him afraid. No difficulties weighed down on his heart. No matter what happened in the future, he was always confident that he could handle everything himself. However, as his cultivation base grew along with his power, he found that his confidence was shrinking. He started to worry about success and failure more often, having more and more misgivings. He had lost that unstoppable courage from his youth, but after sealing his heart devil, he found that this thing called maturity was another term for having small guts. While it could be said to be wise to consider all things and come up with a plan before acting, it could also be said that the more you did this, the more afraid you were of failure. But the Long Chen from back then wasn't afraid of failure. Even if he did fail, he felt like he could always try again. It was that kind of confidence, a determination that he could obtain whatever he wanted as long as he worked on it. Now, Long Chen seemed to have returned to his old self. He was no longer thinking about the future or failure. At this moment, Many people were already inside the palace, including many attendants and bards going back and forth. It was bustling. However, no one even dared to make a loud sound, causing this lively atmosphere to feel rather stifling. Why is it so solemn? Isn't it just a meal? Does it need to be so serious? Asked Long Chen. S.H. Big Brother, keep your voice down. A state banquet isn't a family meal between princes and princesses, nor is it entertainment for officials. We only hold state banquets for foreign diplomats. We didn't receive any word beforehand, but based on the scale, we're going to be seeing more than one group of diplomats this time, whispered Zhu Yifen. Foreign diplomats. Long Chen was startled. Could it be that he was called here because of the diplomats? Big brother, Princess Kaingsu, can I ask for your help? Asked Zhu Yifen suddenly. Let's go. Yu Kaingsu seemed to know what Zhu Yifen wanted, so she directly agreed. Zhu Yifen was delighted and brought the two of them into the depths of the palace grounds. After several turns, they arrived at an inner palace. He had only just pushed open the gates when Sharpsword Kai instantly enveloped the three of them.